She chalked oh. it up with lube. Yeah, lube. What kind lube of lube? Up. We talking standard issue Jergens? You are listening to the bomb hole. Bomb hole podcast. It's going to be very hot. It's going to be very uncomfortable for everybody. <laughs> the bomb hole. I'm going to slide down in big hills. You know what I mean? On a big, nice burgundy snowboard. Okay, we are back in the booth, a.k.a. the booch. Huh, buds? The booch hole. <laughs> back in the booch hole. So today, uh, you know, me, myself, and buds have the bomb hole. And our guest has the boot pack show. If you put them together, what's it called? The booch hole. The boot hole, <laughs> a.k.a. the boot hole. The boot hole. So welcome to the boot hole. We got our guest, Griff Siebert. How you doing, Griff? Doing great. I can smell the vinegar from over here. <laughs> Is that the Red Bull here that I'm drinking or the actual <laughs> the vinegar? Bud's oh, the, oh, the Bud's Booch Hole. Oh, the Bud's Booch. Yes, exactly. Gotcha. So, yeah, welcome to the Boot Hole to our guests. Um, you grew up in uh, Park City originally, right? Green? I did, right up the hill. Um, born and raised, or I guess technically not born yet. There was no hospital at the time. I was born down here in Salt Lake and then transferred as a young newborn straight up to Park City. Well, we got to go Mythbusters on him right out of the gate here. Um, I heard a little rumor that you never mowed a lawn in your life. Now, is that true? Yeah, or? just instant roast. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, it, it's it is not true because I have mowed a lawn. Oh, you have mowed. <laughs> okay, but my dad, his shit was like mowing the lawn. He loves mowing the lawn. Okay. Uh, it must like put him in a zen state. Um, and then one one day, my mom made me like ha- made him make me mow the lawn. I did it, and I left mohawks everywhere. Um, Never mowed the lawn again. <laughs> Your dad probably puts down a pattern, right? Like one of those. Oh yeah, he's that, like, he's nice sick with it. He's nice with the mow for sure. Um, and I'm also allergic to grass, so that's a the double factor. I'm just making up excuses at this point, but you're really allergic to grass. I am. Yeah, it smokes me. If I mow the lawn, I gotta like go straight do like full chemical bath, get it off me. <laughs> I'm like sneezing, dying. Growing up, dude. I mean, not too bad when you only mow it once. True, but just outdoors doing our. Doing oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like when I was a kid, I would we'd play soccer, and then afterwards, I'd just lay in the grass, all sweaty and tired, and then just instant hives. Hived up. And I thought that was just like the sh- shards of grass, but then I realized it was me, <laughs> or like not, it didn't happen to everyone else. It was just me. Well, this is kind of a nice seamless transition into why you love rocks so much, right? Because now now it makes sense. You went to school, you went to college, you went to college for geology. Yep. And it's nice because there's, you know, if you're studying rocks, you're probably not covering grass, right? (laughs) This is true. (laughs) That's very true. (laughs) I mean, I'm not a scientist, but. We we took some biology classes, though. Okay. Um, Actually, funny story was I was on a field camp for geology. And we basically went out for like a month and all these, we went in like Southern Utah and Parowan. Then there was one up North near the Raft rivers on the Idaho Utah border. And we were up there and it was like one of the worst like grass blooms (laughs) that our professor had seen in a while. (laughs) And dude, I got there and I was smoked. It was like first day we like went up to this like outcrop and I was dying, dude. I could not stop sneezing. Face was swollen. And then, I like totally spaced, didn't even think about grass because this is like May and I always am bad. I forget to get like allergy meds. So I straight had to trade this chick weed for allergy meds, but props, <laughs> props <laughs> to my schoolmate for hooking it up. Field camp, they use the barter system. But. Yeah, they yeah, would, yeah, she wouldn't just give you some. It's like Burning meds. Man <laughs> oh, <there's laughs> of rocks. Of rocks. <laughs> Sounds like you had a good time at Geocamp. Oh, yeah, great time. It was actually one of the funnest times. I, I didn't think I was going to have so much fun. Uh, what does one do with the geo degree? What does one do? I don't even know. I mean, you're, I ain't using it at this point. <laughs> what about when you're rock climbing? That's a good. That's yeah, are you good. like up there halfway up and you're like, oh, damn, this is a uh, sedimentary layer? <laughs> I, I actually, I straight have shouted down like, damn, there's some sick cross stratification up here, boys. <laughs> and everyone holding the ropes is like, what? <laughs> Can we get that, that uh, word again? Uh, I'm probably butchering it, but there's some like, it's like cross beds. Oh, okay. So basically like when the sandstone is like blowing over, it's like these nice cross beds and you have a blowout bed on the top. Oh, I love a good blowout Me bed. Too. I love a good blowout. <laughs> um, Utah is actually known for its rocks, huh? Oh yeah. Love, Moab. Yeah. Moab. Lot of Moab, nice. Southern Utah up here even. Yeah. I guess it's a good place to study your geo, huh? Oh yeah. Get, getting hip with the geo. Getting um, down with it. No, I was working at this water consultant company. For the last, or like two summers. It was two summers ago, but I worked there for two summers. 
in a row. And we basically, if you have a new business or say like a ski resort's getting put in, they need, basically need to get their water dial before anything else. So to we see would, what's in there. Yeah. Oh, well, and just like get groundwater, get enough well. Like we would basically scout out where the wells need to be drilled. Because basically in Utah, it's all, it's confusing in the West. It's like water rights. So it all is based off like the Colorado River a long time ago. It's actually really bad how it's based off. It was based off this big water year that's never happened since. So they took the Colorado River. They like watched it for a year, the runoff, which is terrible. You should get like one more year of data. Anyways, they go off one year and they're like, okay, this is how much water is allotted. And then they like would separate it into shares that go downstream. So basically like what if you're in Arizona, you own part of that water, even though it's from Colorado. Oh, wow. Like if you're on the East Coast, you just drill a well and you own the water that's on yeah, your, you your, own your well. property. Yeah. But here you don't own the water, even though it's on your property. Like someone downstream owns part of the water. So it's super confusing, but basically they allotted all this water but it doesn't even exist because it hasn't flown that like flowed that much since then. So there's no way like people own like imaginary water basically. So that's like why it hasn't reached Mexico anyways, right? You can, there's all these crazy rules. That was like one thing I learned the most of was like water rights was crazy. You hit us with the rights at our cabin. He sent over a bunch of, Oh really? Yeah. Randomly. Yeah. yeah, I looked up, I looked up your, well, I I think you actually have rights there. You can look online. I don't remember. He would yeah. never. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you have like a sh- pretty shallow well, but it's not bad. You basically get like one acre foot. So like imagine an acre, like a square acre, and then like one foot of water on the acre. That's usually like what a family or household allotted a year. In school. I learned this in my job actually. Oh, really? After, yeah. <laughs> not even school. I'd like to circle back around to rock talk. Rock talk. From the geologist over here. Griff, right. the geologist. Um, Professor Griff. You know, we were talking earlier about rock climbing, right? And there's mm-hmm. this term I hear, you know, chalk up. Chalk up. Never, I've never chalked up in my life. Fun fact, I brought some chalk for you to chalk up because I knew you, you wanted to try so bad. Yeah, I wanted the first time. used timer. to chalk up in a nightlife plenty. But. Yeah, that's yeah this one's for your hands. <laughs> this is a different, this is a more inexpensive chalk, you could say. Okay, little so calcium so carbonate. Give me, give You're going to want to grab this. Give me a hat-to. Oh, just dunk, for the dunk, mountain climbers For the listeners, that party. I'm holding something that's resembling of a ball sack <laughs> filled with <laughs> chalk. Maybe we can make some bomb hole chalk bags. Yeah, you think it's... <laughs> Dude, Dude, some, hit a comment on YouTube if you want a bomb hole chalk bag. We could put Phil's balls on it. <laughs> oh, no. Well, speaking of, uh, for the listeners, I did just neuter my dog's ball sack. Not personally. A vet did it. He hasn't taught you how to do this okay, yet. Okay, so You're... I'm rubbing the chalk in my hand. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty straightforward. I dunk it in get as much as you okay, want. Gotta, you got to remember. Gotta get bounty. Good thing you're wearing all black. The <laughs> first chalk is the most important. Okay. Always. First chalk is the deepest, you could say. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then you're going to want to like... You want that even layer of chalk on your hand. You want okay. too much because it can make the hold slippery, okay. and you're going to want to do a, like you make a, a pointer Why? finger Why thumb. Why are you going to do this? I'm just, this is, this is a like little a extra, James but it kind of just blows it off perfect texture. Is, is on this your a hand. LeBron James situation? Oh, you could say that. Okay. All right, here we go. <laughs> Oh, yeah, look at that. You can see for, for the viewers, I have a perfectly chalked. Is that a good chalk? You're kind of, I mean, you need the fingertips a little more. Oh, but yeah, you want the tips. This guy likes grabbing slopers. It's okay. Yeah. So this is just to keep, gives you better grip. Oh, yeah, because I got sweaty hands. I think it's more of a mental thing for me at this point. Do you I have chalk to, like, up chalk up halfway up and all that? I chalk, like, probably every four holds. Oh, every four holds. Every four holds, we're going to dip in the chuck. This is the exact opposite of uh, mom's spaghetti palms are sweaty right (laughs) now. These things are bone dry. (laughs) (laughs) We got a bone dry palms. You want to try some chalk stuff? I I hate chalk. Really? Yeah. I like, it reminds me of school and the chalkboard. Is it a texture thing? Texture. Makes Mm. my teeth feel weird. Well, this it reminds me of like a chalkboard. Okay, I can see that. You know, if you if you're gonna, we're talking about chalking up. We're talking about rock climbing. To me, that is some of the you know the crunchiest activities of all time, right? And this guy, like you look at Griff, he loves fucking vegetables. He loves fruit. He loves chalking up patchouli <laughs> oil. All these things. But then you like it, patchouli oil. But, but he loves eh, certain but, kinds sometimes. He he loves NBA 2K. Do you ever feel like you're having like an identity <laughs> crisis? You like oh, chalk I'm up always. and then you're playing 2K because that's kind of like identity crisis in a, in the making there. It's true. I mean, I was a gamer growing up for sure. I would game hard. You ever you chalk did. up the game or? I should try. It might Dude. jam up the sticks, though. <laughs> jam the buttons. I never thought of chalking up before gaming. That'd be dope. 
Yeah, I wonder if there's any gamers that chalk up. Maybe I bet there I'm is. pretty sure there's, like, fans in the nice controllers that, like, blow off people's hands. Is there? <sighs> Keep True that story? shit dry. Yeah, you don't want to be slipping a key if you're yeah, in, like, you a contest. You can't be slipping contest. if you're playing. You're like Ninja there playing oh, for yeah. a Milski. These guys are making buku bucks yeah, those, gaming. Yeah, those bad billies are making They're laughing buku. at us. We're out there trying to snowboard, slide down the hill, and they're just sitting in a nice chair. What do you do about gaming. chalking the eyes? <laughs> It's actually a problem, <laughs> serious it? problem. I got some in my eyes. I right feel now bad. This kind of because Bob Plum's always blaming me, and I go ham on the chalk. He's usually covered in it. Oh, down below, they looks just... like a look like a frat boy party <laughs> down below, all over Bob. <laughs> <laughs> you probably love to give him shit about it too. Oh yeah, we bicker like an old married couple. That kind of brings us to our uh, guest question. Oh yeah, presented by Solomon Snowboards. Uh, I just want to talk to you guys real quick about the Solomon Shadow Fit binding. Best binding on the market, in my opinion. Uh, if you're looking to get some bindings, get some Shadow Fits. They're responsive. They're great. Here is the guest question from Bob Plum. What's up, Bombhole listeners? This is your favorite photographer, Bob Plum. Sorry, Stone, but we both know it's true. I taught Stone everything he knows, even though he's been in the game a couple decades longer than me. Anyhow... We're here for Griffin. We're kind of like a bitter old married couple. We just like to bicker back and forth. And uh, the question I had for you, Griff, is uh, I remember you hurting your tailbone once upon a time, and I'm curious what the healing process was like with that. Oh, Bobby. Great question. Oh, yeah, this one's a little embarrassing. But uh, one day we were at Powder Mountain. You know those days you just got the juice? You're flowing? Oh, yeah. It's maybe like it was a little dangerous. I've been searching for this juice. I haven't found it since <laughs> I, I hit my tailbone this day. But you feel like you can like jump off anything, do anything. And then we basically, this dude took us to the border cross course. And I was so fired up. We're going super fast. Jeff's following me. And then I see this like double roll. And I decide to like try to pop a front 180. I'm on a weird board. There's like no tail on it. Hit basically like slam my ass. It was like electric shock, like jolting up my spine. And I was probably making some, like, grape lady noises, like, Jeff rolls over to me. He's laughing, of course. I'm, like, dying. And then we go. I'm, like, it must be okay. I, like, wait a few days. I can barely sit. And then my mom's a physical therapist, so she knows um, this lady that does, like, pelvic floor. She specializes in pelvic floor, which is basically your low back, your tailbone, everything, all the goods. And, uh... Yeah, I went in there, and she, like, checked me out, and she's like, yeah, you basically have a sublux tailbone, so it's, like, moved to the side a little. I'm going to have to, like, relocate it through your rectum. <laughs> <laughs> Straight <Go> up. <laughs> okay, continue. Yeah, please continue. Laid me on, laid me on the on the table, and then... So you weren't went. on all fours. <laughs> You're, uh, because no. I pictured you straight up all fours. <laughs> no. we're, we're, can we just, for the sake of the story, can you just say you're on yeah, all fours? Yeah, let's just say you're on all fours. <laughs> way better that it's way. It's like the episode of Austin Powers where they're reaching in, <laughs> grabbing things. Yes, that's, you know what, that's I'm what I envision. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. I don't, hopefully, only the minimum amount of fingers that she needed to get the job done. But Three, I'd imagine. I would, yeah, I would think what you would she, maybe she need she the thumb. Lubrication? She's just going dry? Yeah, two, what are we I'm talking? Oh, we lube, she, she lubed it up, up for sure. She chalked up? <laughs> she, she, oh, you don't want to chalk for this. She oh. chalked it up with lube. Yeah, lube. What kind lube of lube? Up. We talking standard issue Jergens? I didn't lube. look, dude. I was like, it was <laughs> one of those... One of those massage tables where your head's through the thing, and I was just staring at the floor, just pretending I was somewhere else. So you kind of were on all fours. You were <laughs> face down. Face. You were face down. <laughs> so I'm thinking two fingers and a thumb. <laughs> that's you crazy. Just, I, I, I had no idea that's there how, for? What's yeah. going on? I don't know. In there, and then popped it back in. Did once. It hurt? It definitely hurt once she was in there, and then grabbed it, and then popped it. But once it popped, it like felt so much better. Ooh. It was rough, though. I remember going to the climbing. I, like, could climb still because I couldn't, like, I didn't have to sit or anything. And the harness, like, has no pressure on your anus. And uh, <laughs> I basically went there and I, like, showed up and everyone's like, you all good? And you guys, I'd be like, you guys have no idea what just happened to me. <laughs> Any uh, PTSD? You have to see any uh, therapist or anything after that? Uh, I think I'm good, good, but, yeah, it was... I mean, she helped me out in the long yeah. run. No, that's good. That's good. Yeah. I, I, I was going to Norway. Exactly. I went to Norway like two weeks or a week later, I think. So she hooked it up without having to. 
it would have been a really painful plane plane ride, I think, without yeah. her uh, relocation. Yeah. Then anal adjustment's crucial. <laughs> I didn't know it worked like that, but I guess it makes sense. She told me after, she's like, yeah, sometimes they come out and you need to come back in and get done. And I was like, oh, I think uh, one time might be enough for yeah. me on that one. <laughs> You're one, one time on that one. I'm, huh? I'm just curious about the lubrication. What kind of viscosity are we talking about? Yeah. You know, that's what, but, you know, we can, we can pivot. She must have gloved up. <laughs> Oh yeah, definitely oh, gloved yeah. up. That's unsanitary. Otherwise, so um, wild. You know, talking about injuries, talking mm. about uh, your career, you had uh, a very rare injury with the femur. You want to yeah. take us through that? <laughs> yes, lots of diggers, I guess. Um, no lands, but when I actually this one was a land. I was 16 years old at like a rev tour in Copper, and they had like super super flat landings on their jumps and. I don't know what happened really, but I did a back seven Japan in my contest run. I was like that guy where they shut down everything. I landed. I like over rotated a tiny bit, but nothing crazy. Landed. My leg just snapped. Snapped my femur. I was just sliding down the. Femur, the biggest bone oh, in your yeah, body. Snapped it in half. Sliding down the landing. Like, I remember just like, oh my God, I didn't know what to do. I just started screaming. And then it's kind of like a vague memory because I feel like they had me so like hopped up on IVs and random stuff um very very heavy though and then yeah they thought i had like cancer my mom was tripping because you're because it just bone but i guess like my bones snapped so easily but like i guess if you're twisted and enough pressure it will just that's a break. stomp town nation yeah that's there. like serious after bang back seven leg crack um but first thing Did you like feel it just dude it honestly didn't really hurt that much because i think i was in like shock or it was i think pain is more like a your body kind of warning you at that point shit's fucking broken yeah you go to shock mode huh? but pulling it in traction was gnarly so like when you break your femur it's gnarly because you have your femoral artery you can like bleed mm -hmm. out you got like five minutes if that thing gets hit yeah i luckily didn't hit that clean break <laughs> and uh yeah they had to pull like your leg to like put it in traction that shit hurts so bad i remember james jackson was my coach at the time i don't even know i'd call him coach but he was like the guy that would like come with us to contest and everything um he's the shit shouts to james let's give him an air horn uh um, i love how the guests are always nodding down to the, uh, the yeah. air horn maker oh, <laughs> james is definitely worthy of an <laughs> air horn um but yeah i remember him just like don't stop looking at me and he was like pulling the traction it was it, it take, oh, he it's like it? basically it's no like, he was like just over my face oh, so gotcha. like i wouldn't For like the lose my I've, mind i've seen this happen before my buddy broke his fem femur snow and billing it's like a ratchet strap that like pulls your legs apart because the muscles want to tighten down on them so it's mm. like this yeah, you're pulling the fracture like apart so then they can gnarly. go and fix it dude this homie that i saw he got shots of morphine and he was still screaming bloody murder when that happened it's oh, gnarly yeah. it was i don't want to relive that one yeah and tell you that um but first thing i remember like hood that next summer i just made myself go to the big jump and just do a back seven i was just like i had to I can't have this fear being nice. like my head. I had to like get back on the horse. You go back seven or you go boot? Because some boots a good option sometimes. Boot grab. Boot grab? I don't go boot grab. Oh, you didn't? Okay. All right. No, nah, no boot grab. <laughs> what, who am I? Fan. Flying tomato? <laughs> I can't spin much, but I'm going to grab in the right spot. Yeah, I'll you, tell you you're that. You're a good grabber. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I think it was, I was with Forrest once and he broke his. Emer for sure. Country. Yeah, I heard he broke it in Uinas. Dude, we were deep. Oh my god! And uh, we had to get him out with a snowmobile, and we had to like lay him over the back and drive as slow as humanly possible. Mm. Every bump, he was just back there suffering. Oh man! It was like a 30, 40 minute ride out. Yeah, that's gnarly. I was like, luckily the... he didn't nick that artery or anything, but it was his femur. Yeah, it's definitely scary. It's a scary break for sure. Do Concerning not want one. that to happen when you're deep out in the back country. Thankful man. for modern medicine. Yeah. For those type of injuries. Let's give it shouts to the doctors out there. Shouts. You know? Give them an air horn. It's a, we're on the different we I switched <laughs> over doctor? the soundboard oh, because okay. it's actually time for a little segment, buds. Oh, name that video yes, part. Yes it is. Uh oh. Yes Let's it is. Get them this time. How you feeling? A You've been nervous. too nice to some of the customers right, let, here, let, man. Let's, here, let's get into the intro. Let's get it. Name that video part is presented by the Dew Tour. Love that event, huh, buds? It's a quality event. A lot of our guests <laughs> <laughs> have gone to, right? 
God, the great spokesman for the Dew Tour. It's a quality event. It's probably my favorite event. I'm sold. I'm going. I've yeah. never been. Uh, maybe they, could they have like a, a granola blading uphill to granola turn? Granola blading. To turn, maybe? Like, yeah, we could do that. We could Dirksen, he'll organize a little event. Yeah. <laughs> That would you be get, sick do we get at free granola tour. at the top? <laughs> That'd be really cool. Imagine Mountain Dew flavored granola. Now we're talking. I'm I'm pretty interested. I'd like to invest. I'd like to. <laughs> I would like Shark Tank. I'd like to invest. Let's do All this. All right. Song one is for Griff. Here we go. Nine one nine one. <laughs> Best video ever made. That is correct, sir. You know what you get yourself. Shouts to Gigi. One of the they didn't even OGs. say the writer yet. <laughs> um, this Giggy is rough. I'm holding for the listeners a wow, Playmate igloo cooler wrapped in bombhole print filled with bombhole merch. Wow, I'm excited. Available at bombhole.com. This thing's gonna be nice at the crag. What are you gonna put in there? Some booch? You bringing that to the aggro crag? I might bring uh, some buds booch. Actually, let's get. He's, buds been, he's been talking a big game. This well, could be a future investment for your uh, new company. Let's, let's do it. The listeners think we're um, buds. Has uh, he had some fermenting um, water in his <laughs> in his uh, shower? Yes. And we were thinking about starting a little brand called Buds's Booch. It's a kombucha brand. I'm getting a Kickstarter going. Yeah. After this episode, probably. There might be a, bur- a beard hair or two in every drink. Yeah. Every That's drink. organic. It's organic. <laughs> Buds is booge. Organic beard hair. It's going to be quality. Well, uh, What's like your first flavor? My first flavor of Buds is booge is uh, Stoney's beard. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Snow- no, I like those sour flavors. Yeah, you like, like it vinegar? Sour diesel or something, you know? Sour that diesel. Here we go. That makes one of us. That would yeah. actually probably sell. Oh, You yeah. don't like the sour ones? Dude, I don't like. I'm like a ginger. I like the ginger. We, yeah, we, yeah. We can get a ginger flavor going. Maybe for we you. get uh, Harrison Gordon on the team. We yes. give him a pro model ginger booch <laughs> for sure. Harrison, <laughs> call me up, bud. Let's do this. Mammy swag in okay. a bottle. Okay, we are still in name that oh, video part. So let's get song two. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna say this. The listeners this week. I feel like you might know this one, bud. Me? Yes. <laughs> if you know it. You get a participation award, All right. but if you don't, the listeners can guess it. So uh, let's give Buds a chance on this one because he thinks he know- he claims I- these knows these sometimes. Here we go. First of all, it's an FODT video. Yes, it is the company you owned. Yeah, but let's hope you get part, this one right. The part though, dude. I what I probably I couldn't tell you what movie. They all fold into each other. You want to play it one more time? I mean, I'm I know a song. It's mom. Put us it's Mom Deep. Like Mom Deep off their first middle. album. And uh, only the Shook ones, I think. That's correct. Ain't no such thing as a halfway crux. Yeah. Is there a, a beast mode front lip in this part? No. Okay. I'm thinking of a different rider. Um, I'll I, give you another guess. He's been a guest on this show. Oh, he's been on this show. Oh, that's yep. easy. Justin Benny. That is correct. I hey, was going to say Benny. I was going to say Benny. Man. He got one. Benny, Benny I was thinking or, EC. That was Moment oh, of Truth. EC. That's Moment, moment of, of truth, truth, Justin Benny. And if you haven't watched that, let's put a link in the yeah. show notes because that's some major inspiration. Benny had the cover of that. And for the listeners, you movie. have no name that video part this week. <laughs> 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 we apologize and thank you for not playing Name That Video Part. I, I think we should drop some new rules for Name That Video Part. Like you can only win... Maybe once a month or something. Yeah, we have a lot of repeat winners. Yeah. We got to maybe make some new rules as we some go. amendments. Yeah. It's like a, it can't be an open book. We need a, what's it called when you have someone like watch you ch- take the test? What's that called? Uh, I yeah, try, you guys I are probably the I worst people a, to ask yeah, this I haven't taken a test <laughs> in like 30 <laughs> years. Yeah. <laughs> well, let me bring maybe it in. A I drug have a, test, that's about all I've taken. <laughs> <laughs> Pee in the cup. <laughs> True. <laughs> Um, hey, since I, you guys are asking me questions, I got to name that rock for oh, you guys. Oh, okay, here <laughs> name we go. that rock. Name Larry. that rock. <laughs> well, yo, let's see it. Okay, but the winner gets a special prize. I got it later. Hey, is it first? Is it first? Like, what's the what kind of rules? Just yell out as many as we want, or you, is it like we have one guess? Sedimentary. No, no, so this is the actual type of the rock. <laughs> I this got time. it. I got uh, it. Sandstone, granite. Damn, this guy's on it. That looks like granite. I don't know. It's the I, got it. I, got yeah, it. I got it. got <laughs> it. That's some bullshit, man. But it, what kind of rock is it? Type of sedimentary. Rock. Yep. 
I said oh, these I guys are that crushing it. I said it that first. No, I knew. You I said know. sedimentary first, and then I said sandstone. These guys are killing it. I'm proud of you guys. I get the prize. Part of me wants to just chalk up and just, just let's hold chalk that up thing. and climb this Crimp rock. on that thing, dude. Yeah, let's chalk that's up a good and skipping, get that. That's a good skipping rock. Right I there. could climb that. That rock. is. Hey, I uh, wanted to circle back to your childhood. Mm -hmm. I have a question from uh, one of our Patreon. He's actually what we refer to as a big dog. His name's Hava. He says, uh, "How much was an influence? How much of an influence was your older brother Zach on you as a snowboarder?" Even though I think his golf swing could use some work, he was a great snowboarder. And for uh, everyone listening, I used to shoot your brother. He was one of the FODT alumni. Used to kind of rock a Rasta kit. Z biscuit. Some, yeah. He was. Uh, Let's give him an air horn. It's actually Let's pretty definitely sick. Definitely give Zach an air horn. I was always pretty stoked to go from, you know, spending a lot of time with your brother and then seeing you come up. It was definitely dope. But yeah, how much of an influence was he on you, Hava? Would like to know. I mean, the big dog, Hava. <laughs> the big dog. Shouts to the big dog. Um, I mean, Zach was the ultimate influence. He was probably the whole reason why I snowboard. Because growing up, obviously, we like grew up in Park City, so I feel like going to the ski resort from a young age was a thing. Our dad was like a pretty big ski bum, but um, my brother started snowboarding, and obviously, I wanted to snowboard because what big bros doing? And then, especially growing up, like. Casey Nelson, Tome, Iliantolo were always chilling at the house, always watching snowboard videos. I feel like they planted that seed in me when I was super little. Um, and I just wanted to be like my brother and his friend. So the ultimate influence, I wouldn't I wouldn't be snowboarding without Zach. That's so. sick. What yeah. about little Steezalino? Little Neil? Neil? Oh, definitely big <laughs> influence as too? well, for sure. Is he older than you? He might, he's older than me, yeah. I had his hand-me-downs, actually. I, had a, I remember a hand-me-down Bozung board. But it was made special for Neil because oh. he was too small to ride the normal yeah. one. And I remember getting on it and it had like such round edges. I like couldn't turn on it, but I was like, this board's so sick. I'm going to ride awesome. it anyways. Yeah, Neil was so little when we started shooting him. He's like, oh, yeah, tiny. How old his, he was, his like 12. name was Lil Steez in the movie, right? Yeah, Lil Steez Alino. Yeah, and Steez. I feel like even my brother and Neil and Ian Provo, they kind of went from like obviously filming rails and everything and then moved into powder and split boarding and i feel like without those guys i probably wouldn't got into split boarding either that's uh you know that actually brings us right to another patreon question if that's cool um jake radmer wants to know if you have any advice for people wanting to get into split boarding that are new to split boarding yeah i mean the first thing for anyone going out there just to like for the safety factor is definitely take an avi class um and then i think you should like include that with the first aid class because if it, anything happens someone after like an avalanche unfortunately there'll probably be some sort of first aid scenario so it's like you they teach you how to find someone but then having the skills to be able to kind of help your friend to live which is is huge too um but off noting all that scary stuff i think just finding like a good friend to learn with and someone that you trust it's kind of one of those like mentorship things but I was lucky enough to kind of get into it around the same time as like Randy Van Erden, aka Killer. We used to Killer. date together. Shouts to Killer. He gets an air horn. He is a beast. Oh, he's the best. He also I see his truck up like big and little every day. He probably doesn't even have a phone. Um, yeah. He's doing it all for all the right reasons. I feel like he loves snowboarding. Like for no photos, no fame, nothing. Just just doing it because for the love. Um, but me and him, and like Trevor at Milo, we're always just like going. And every day we would go, we'd see look up some new run then we get there and you'd see some other peak and it was just like opening this huge novel that you are never going to finish basically and it's honestly for me split boarding is like it's the reason why i'll snowboard for the rest of my life because obviously i love riding park i love doing tricks and everything like that um but eventually it's it's a little rough on the bod you get all banged up after a few years maybe you tell, tell me about it <laughs> <laughs> um but it's just a way that like you can just keep doing it. It's a longevity thing, you know, a sustainable way to snowboard. And it's just, even if you go up and you don't get your objective for the day, you come down and you still, like, we're out walking around the mountains with your good friends. So it's, it's like, really, you have that, like, a really good feeling afterwards, that no matter sense, what. That makes actually. It'll keep you back there forever, really. Oh, yeah. As it's long as you're moving. Good way to, like, calm the mind and everything. And it's here it's so awesome because you don't have to wait for the resort to open. You can go whenever you want. So say even, like, you have a 9-to-5 job, you can wake up early and still still go get a lap in before work. So I think it's so rad. It obviously costs a lot to get into it, 
which sucks. But then you got to realize that you'll never have to buy a pass ever again, which is the really cool part. And your equipment's going to last a couple of years. Yeah, definitely. A couple of things there. Uh, first of all, talking about nine to five, getting up early, going before work. This guy, you know, you think you're heading to the resort early. He's already back at home playing 2K on his couch. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. That shit's tracked by 10. I'm already. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing like LeBron. pulling up to the parking lot <laughs> up across from Snowbird there. And uh, you pull up and you're there at like 9 a.m., 830 even. And people are just coming down, hooting and hollering. Mm-hmm. And you're just like, what, dude? It's Get even up crazy. Here at four, man. <laughs> dude, I watch people like, because we go early. And I'll what watch time? what I think is early. I mean, we try and get up. Depends like what you're going to ride. But sometimes you're starting hiking at like 4 or 5 a.m. Headlamps. But, but, but somehow some people will be riding superior. No joke. Down with headlamps on. You're like, okay, at that point, that is one, so sketch. And then two, like, yeah, are you even sketch. enjoying it? Like, you can't see anything. But they're just trying to beat you, right? They're like I, yeah, trying I to don't beat know. that guy. Like, I was here first, man. That one's crazy to me. My new, my new favorite thing is the sunset. Because, like, everyone's so aggro here in the morning. Mm-hmm. I feel like the sleeper move is you go sunset. It's a pro tip. I, I like the sleeper You obviously got to be, down. you got to worry about, like, the, the dark coming. But yeah. it is cool because there's no one in the parking lot. And then you cruise up and well, chill vibes. Chill Stony vibes. Bud style. I like what you said about that's safety. A, that's his for arrival people. time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. That's, you you that's tell mine. Buds to be there by noon. He's there for the sunset. Sunset. The sunset I actually shoot. thought this was a sunset photo shoot. <laughs> Buds loves a little evening glass yeah, off. I love it. <laughs> Um, I like what you said about safety because, you know, kids are going to Milo. Their parents might be buying them this setup. They're basically giving them a ticket to the backcountry. Yeah. And if you don't have that proper training, training that's sketchy. And so for I sure. Think that's good advice for people, you know, like get get that done. Yeah, yeah, and listen to the mountains. Here we're so lucky. Like the Utah Avalanche Center they're does such a good job. Like if you don't know what's going on, then you're like – just being completely ignorant. It's but like if, on if the people phone. Don't know you can the channels, call. What are the channels? What do they do? Uh, yeah, we should put them in on the the extra Avalanche Center. Yeah, but I think you. I have the app, and they just update it every morning. Um, or you can call in. There's a hotline. There's an Instagram too, right? Instagram. There's a hotline. There's a website. I assume there's a Facebook. It's Avalanche. probably a Twitter or something. Yeah, we'll Utah link this Avalanche. In the show notes. notes. We'll yeah. link this we'll all link in the show notes. All the all the lifelines for Avi info in the show notes. Also, yeah. Also, uh, another thing that people don't realize with uh, splitboarding, great feature. Uh, as snowboarders, we never have anything in our hands, right? We're snowboarding. You never have poles. You go splitboarding, you get poles. What we don't realize is snowboarders, you can point at shit. It is actually one of the best features True. of splitboarding. You got the pole in your hand. You can say, oh, there's fucking Superior over there. Or there's Wolverine. Uh, you know, you, you get to flex all the names of the peaks. That's what mm-hmm. people, that you notice, I noticed in the granola blading, people love to hold poles and then flex their knowledge of the mountains and point at things. Flexing pole is flexing, what we call yeah. that. <laughs> Us granola bladers call that flexing pole, flexing pole. Flexors. I actually have really bad luck with poles. Really? Yeah, well, I was just on this trip in Japan. I snapped three pairs on one trip. Three Maybe pairs. you're using the wrong poles, bud. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I'm putting <laughs> a little too much a little sheer force focus on there. in the poles, huh? Are you using them to point at uh, inanimate objects? Yeah, I was just pointing way too hard. <laughs> you know, other, other than pointing, back in the day, there used to be skier snowboarder beef. Uh-huh. I saw Mark Frank taking <clears throat> guys' poles and beat them. Really? <laughs> and break them. Break allegedly, them the allegedly, we should say for legal allegedly. purposes. Allegedly. Legal purposes. That's yeah. no bird. Which would actually probably be better than the skis because hopefully it would be a soft aluminum. It would bend a little. It was more for comedic value. He wasn't like trying to hurt the <laughs> yeah. dude. I love the MFM parts where he's spraying the dude. It was one of those scenarios gone bad, I think. You know what's funny is we used to watch that and get so hyped, and I was a little kid like, 15 and i for sure did that to people and one time i remember it was like snow it solitude opening day they were the first resort to open and they had like the white ribbon of death like shouldn't have even been open it was all like man-made snow and some dude i don't know why i was probably just being an, an asshole little kid but i like sprayed this dude and it was kind of that slushy snow and it like hit him pretty good and like he fully fell over and he came <laughs> at us like oh hot. Yeah, people and we were get like, upset. Yeah, we were like, I think he realized we were like little kids afterwards. And but you're yeah. probably like, I didn't mean to. <laughs> like, dude, I was just trying to be like MFM dog. Spray? I can't help myself. I will still spray people. Oh yeah. I it's just try not to spray kids Especially if you it's your friend right there. Oh yeah. I, yeah. The little demon comes out of me. It's like devil on the shoulder. You you're like, Oh, yourself. you gotta get him, you gotta get him. Yeah. It's a degrading move, to say the least. I do it for sure still. Speaking of the spray though, um, for the layman's, a lot of times, let's let's break down the difference between a good turn and a hockey stop. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. The it's hockey stop. a good one because shooting photos, man, 
The hockey stops no bueno. Hockey stops kind of no yeah. bueno, like whenever, because then yeah, you just that, can't that's what see spray you somebody. Is. That's how what you do when you spray do somebody. It. Yeah, but this, there's an art to the spray where you're not in the spray. Yeah, you want you want to stay dry. I don't want snow all over me. It's annoying. Okay, you stay dry, completely dry, if you can. Every once in a while, though, it's fun to dunk one over the head. But I feel like yeah, it's just the constant hockey stop, which I definitely learned quick growing up. Just like white room yourself, and then you're like. There's trees. I have no idea where I'm going. Barely no, yourself. No, and nothing, nothing like going on Instagram the day after uh, Powder Day and seeing like somebody post like 48 hockey stops to the oh, face. Oh, yeah, we love that. <laughs> <laughs> Selfie filmed. Guilty as charged. Yeah, I've definitely filmed one for sure. <laughs> it is fun, but the, yeah, the spray, the spray well, For the is layman, key. what's the technique? The technique? I don't know. I feel like just trying to like turn and not like long drawn out turn without dunking your tail, I feel like. Because the, the dunk really? of the tail is when it. <laughs> oh, you know, yeah, but you the can tail. snap your tail. Like Sometimes it's nice. You like and go still and get then out of it. snap it oh, if you, you want dunk. it. But if you go no dunk, you'll be chilling I and long the dunk was speed. Part of the deal, yeah. That the dunk was a big. That six piece likes to dunk, huh? Six piece. Uh, it does a little bit better on the steel than the pow. We'll give <laughs> I it got that. a question. What do you ride in the pow days then? I have ridden six, six piece. piece. <laughs> I do. No, I've hit big backcountry jumps on the six piece. I've ridden it in the pow. It's good too. Is it the ideal board for it? No, but it's what I'm used to. And I'll tell you, I and just, that's what you jump with. I you come, ride it I on did, everything. I'm the type of person it, like it's it's not necessarily the board. I think that you can ride it. And have you ever seen Torstein? He rides like a 143, dude. Really? Yeah, like I does like goddamn quadruple corks, and his board looks like a, it's tiny. I feel know? like Gigi Gigi in all those videos too has like a normal board. Yeah, he's always <laughs> it's way easier to land on a big board. Mm-hmm. I, I'll go big for he sure. He weighs like 105 pounds. I could use all the help I can get. The the good years I've had in the backcountry, I've been riding a 163. There we go. So, but wow. uh, sometimes I get too lazy to just switch over. But um, yeah, you know, I think we should maybe get into another mm. guest question. Let's do it. Presented by Solomon from our good friend Sage Kotzenberg. Ah, yo, squad, Sage here. I had a question for the Griffler. Uh, back in the day, you had a fleece face mask company called Seeb's Fleece that uh, you were making. And I am I was kind of wondering what the future holds with that, with COVID, all the you know, face masks everywhere. And it uh, kind of seems like a prime time opportunity to bring it back. And maybe we can, you know, let's talk BISC. Let's talk investment. Let's, do, let's diversify portfolios here. Maybe we can get something happening. Uh, anyways, uh, hope to see Seeb's Fleece again. Love y'all. Great question. He does have that Olympic cash, so you yeah, might yeah. want to do a presentation. Could be tell a good about, investor. Tell us about <laughs> this uh, Seeb's fleece. I forget about the Seeb's fleece. It's actually Seeb's fuzz, <laughs> which <laughs> is <laughs> even worse. It's like peach fuzz. Seeb's, Seeb's fuzz. fuzz. Nobody uh, told you it was a bad name. <laughs> no one knew. Your yeah. brother was like, this is it. Go with it. Yeah, I think my, my brother, we were like 10 years apart, so it's like, oh, uh, well, nothing, nothing. Obviously, we bicker, but nothing but love, kind of. He's like, yeah, this is dope, man. Yeah, Go with it. yeah totally. Um, but my mom, I remember I, like, somehow really wanted a sewing machine so bad. And I, like, finally got one. And I was so hyped on, like, sewing all this stuff. This is when everyone was, like, wearing flannels and all this stuff. So I had these. I'd have, like, Walmart-style, like, face masks that I made that somehow said Seeb's Fuzz. I don't know if I could even do it anymore. Yeah, like, would write it into the... The, the sew, and then I would, like, cut it out so the bottom print would stick wow. out. It was yeah, tech. They probably sell right now yeah, with that's, everything that's going on. It's kind of a big margin with the amount of labor in the <laughs> fuzz. Yeah, how long device. did it take you to make one Seeb's fuzz? I can It was so long ago. Probably a while, though. I was, yeah. I was a young kid, now not too good at sewing. Were all your buddies rocking the fuzz, or what? I think it was more just me run, running the Seeb's fuzz. The, the thing about <laughs> The thing about Seeb's Fuzz, it's like the name is actually, it's so bad, it's good. It's like, it's like no bad day, you yeah. know, like, you know, no bad day. Like, it's like, it's kind of like, you're like, wow, that name's awful. But like, I, it's kind of sick because it's so bad. Seeb's Fuzz. Seeb's mm-hmm. Fuzz. I'd like to invest. And my mother's an angel. She obviously didn't tell me that that was, <laughs> this was pre mine in the gutter. Also, with Seeb's Fuzz, let's talk about the functionality. <laughs> Can we talk functionality? Let's talk uh, all that snow from your hockey stop is, is just straight caked. <laughs> Stick into the fuzz. It actually it makes it say Seeb's fuzz through the snow that gets caked onto there. <laughs> is that <laughs> a true story? <laughs> no. Different materials. <laughs> so Seeb's fudge is like a snow storage mask. Yeah, yeah exactly. Dude, I got to be honest, though. The beard, when you're out, I don't wear anything when I shred because the snow mm-hmm. builds like an igloo, which in turn insulates your face. Oh, yeah. 
and it's so warm. Like everyone, when you see someone with a beard that's just crusted with snow, warmest program out there. Oh, so yeah. Seeps Fuzz is probably onto something. Mm-hmm. I actually, uh, the irony is, I hate Science. face masks. Oh, I straight won't wear them. Yeah, <laughs> I have, we have this weird theory. Sam and I always do at the beginning of the year. If you like acclimate yourself to not I having a this. face mask, then you don't need to wear one. Unless you're like obviously snowmobiling or something where it's like brick. But yeah, you, you're good to go. I feel like if you acclimate the face. Especially if you're making the turns proper without the hockey stop yeah, yeah, and spraying yeah. your face. Exactly. Keep it clean. Keep it nice. Just spray East on so he keeps that snow on his beard for insulation. Yeah. I do a couple hockey stops, run one, build up my insulation, the, the <laughs> snigloo and the stomach glue and the beard. And the snigloo. <laughs> good to go. That could be a flavor of Bud's Snigloo. Booch. Oh, Bub's, Bud's, well, what Bud's Booch. Bud's, snigloo. Bud's Booch, uh, Seeb's Fuds collab. Okay? Oh, let's <laughs> That's what I, do it. I'd like to see. Is it a furry bottle? Yes. <laughs> no, it's like a bottle insulator. You can, yeah, exactly. Okay, now we're talking. It's like now a koozie talking. with a stitched seems fuzz on there. <laughs> um, let's I do this. I can see this thing on Shark Tank. I can see Mark Cuban just going, I'd like to invest. You know what I mean? Cuban's down. He's He wants uh he wants 12%. You know, he'll throw 200K at it. Uh, he probably wants 51%. Let's that talk, guy is a shark. Let's talk future bisque. That's what it is. Future bisque. Investment bisque. Sage is in. Mm-hmm. Grenier's in. You in? Cuban's in. Let's do it. Let's do this. I hey, don't. I gotta to remember how face, to sew. You're gonna have to wear a face mask again, though. You're kind of. You gotta have to market your own product. Yeah, this is tough. I don't know if it's gonna. We're gonna, gonna, gonna take succeed. it. We're gonna get them produced in China. Full sweatshop, kids. Mm. Just get it. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so <clears throat> seeps fuzz. You know, let's talk about a feel good movie of the year. We got a little sneak preview. Me and buds. It's called Backyard Buggy. Oh. Two. Your new movie. The new move. I'll tell you tell what. Tell us about it. That thing makes you want to shred. Uh, I thank you guys for that because that was the ultimate goal. Um, basically, at the beginning of the year, I was living with Blake Paul. He was st- living at my house. And he he's always good at like chopping up his footage and making nice Instagrams. Um, I was kind of playing. He was showing me how to like chop up some of my old GoPro footage. And then it kind of sparked this flame in me that I wanted to like buy a camera and film the friends. Because we were having an epic January and February here. And I just wanted to, like, capture that moment. I feel like pow days at Brighton, to me, are, like, why I snowboard. I'm just so juiced. Everyone's so happy. Like, I just want to capture that, like, feeling of stoke. And I feel like in order – so then I was that idiot with the GoPro stick <laughs> <laughs> out there every day um, just trying to, like, log footy. But it was super fun. I just made this video fully. I had no idea what I was doing. Blake, like, showed me how to edit. I kind of just, like, watched YouTube videos, figured it out. Um, Final Cut Pro. I use Premiere, All right. but yeah, it's basically like the same thing. Um, and yeah, I, hopefully you guys go watch and it makes you want to go snowboard. A couple things from a first-time viewer that I thought were incredible. Uh, the intro section with the drone aerial shots where you ride through the frame, mm. those clips were beautiful, and it felt like I hadn't seen some th- something like that as far as like picturesque Nat Geo-type snowboard filming. It was cool. Yeah, I feel like my brain's always thinking of weird things and uh shouts to bob plum on we this one bob Dr- drone guy film, huh? uh, bob plum's made good use of that drone I'll he tell has you what. Covers, good roi yeah i've watched that good thing ROI. almost get lost like three times or, or the battery or he'll be like guys i got plenty of batteries and we'll be like hiking up the line and you're like dude maybe save those batteries he'll be like we're good and then like we're about to drop and he's always like guys gotta drop i'm low on battery <laughs> like, dude, we told you <laughs> Um, but yeah, I basically wanted like the idea was to have a frame. Like I would just keep riding through the frame over and over again, but then it changes scenery every time. And it kind of, it kind of works. Looks really cool. Um, but yeah, Bob, we were just shooting like static shots down. I feel like there's a good drones are a really cool tool if you like use them in the right you way. You got to use them tastefully and correctly. Mm-hmm. And Bob has uh, probably overdid it at this point, but <laughs> yeah. and up until now, he's definitely in a lot of success. Kids well, nice with the sticks. Let's talk about a, a print we have for sale, which also happens to be a cover. Which is an aerial shot overhead turn on hard pack. Shot by Bob. Plum. Shot by Bum. We got lucky on that one. Uh, it definitely. I, think I don't might have watched that. Was that at Brighton? <laughs> it was at Brighton. I think Literally. I was heckling you going up the chairlift. I'm almost positive. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think it was you. And like, I'm pretty sure Ted also was going yeah. up the lift heckling, heckling us. Um, that was a cover shot. Huh? It's basically this flat zone at Brighton. I love it. 
to everyone else is probably super boring, but it's literally flat. Like I'm talking really like this table flat, but it's always pristine cord. Like no you one can touches see it on it. the lift going up. Yeah. Oh, you get right to the left there on crest. Or yeah. Something you, where that flat spot is. Totally. You got to like bomb down and yeah, go. Yeah. I know right where that's at. Um, but I think we shot that in like early in the season. And I remember shooting it. It was so cold. I like dropped in miscommunication with Bob and Tracked then it. No, like when he wasn't ready, but then he like said he shot it, but then he was like, "Ah, it's, it's shitty photo." And we're like, "Let's just go home." We Let's like go, go home, home, and then I like up, we like go load it onto the computer. I'm like, "Damn, this photo is pretty sick, Bob." And he's like, "Well, let me see." <laughs> he walks <laughs> over the computer, and yeah, I somehow I was on a cover doing like I, nothing. I love that. There's what people was that the there. cover of? It's just me turning. Oh, um, uh, snowboarder's journal. Snowboarder. You, you know what's dope. incredible is there's people out there chucking roast doing like. Building cheese wedges, yeah. doing like cab double under flip fucking 1080s and shit. And like just just dying for a photo or sequence or whatever. You know, oh, did this, they get a cover? This, this guy just shit. goes up early season, there does a turn on hard pack, <laughs> lands himself on the front of the magazine. It's that's fucking beautiful. Were you wearing that red kit? No red kit. I was no, no normal kit. I but got a, a, are we sp- Still, this is a funny story. So when we found out that it was on the cover, me and Bob were, I think we were filming for like the Lick the Cat movie. And we were in a Tokyo uh, hotel room, me and Bob. And I randomly was on, I like was checking the sites, just like bored out and had internet in a while. And I was like looking and I see that the photo was like on the issue on the online. Then I clicked on it and it was like the magazine. And I was so confused at first. And I was like, Bob, dude, look at this. I was like, we got the fucking cover and we, me and him it was like <laughs> i'll never forget it it was like lost in translation moment we're just hugging in a hotel room like <laughs> so hyped Wait, in tokyo no idea Nobody no idea you. and we both like found out while we were sharing a hotel room in tokyo it wow was sick. that's yeah. an interesting synchronicity right there it was, it was epic before we were uh sorry buds i'm gonna interrupt <laughs> no go ahead this go is on, on subject but before we were on air rolling we were talking um about kind of what the worst trends are in snowboarding. And you had just a beautiful answer that kind of ties into what we're talking about. Yeah, I think to me, like the worst trend is thinking that your type of snowboarding is better than someone else's or your, or like your own. And I think, I don't know, it's just like everyone finds their inspiration down like every field of snowboarding. And that's like the beautiful part about it. Like I love watching rails and I love watching contests and like thinking that like your, whatever you're doing is like superior to that is so lame to me. Cause like some kid might not have a mountain in his hometown. He's got like the toe hill and he loves watching rails. So like you, and that's like his life. So it's like, that's awesome. Be stoked for him. And like someone like me, that's super inspired by like lines and stuff like that, which probably when I was younger, I definitely skipped through those video parts, but now going back, I, I, they're like, can't get enough of them you know you're like damn these guys just become heroes and then even watching contests i have like so much respect for all those guys and like the the effort you have to put into like your own outlet of snowboarding and i think that's so rad about snowboarding is if if everyone did the same thing it'd be just super boring and dry it's true but the thing is is that whatever genre of snowboarding you're in is actually the best that's the other thing <laughs> no, it is it is funny that everyone every crew always thinks their jumps the best yeah, they're, or their or rails their you're a rail trip guy. they're on is the best yeah. or whatever they're doing is the best Jeez, so it's funny you are say the best. That. rails are the best everyone's but, having the best day ever oh yeah let's just remember we're all sliding around on well, pieces of plastic what's funny yeah. is the the worlds are so separate now between mm-hmm. like what jumpers are doing and what jibbers are doing and what backcountry or contest they're full separate clicks. It's it's crazy. Totally. But it's also awesome. Yeah, I think it's yeah. awesome too. There's so many different ways Little to get flavor. involved with the sport. Yeah. Imagine if Booch's Bud's Booch was just one flavor. Yeah, we that, need you can't options. have one flavor. You need a library of oh, flavors. Yeah. That's that's true. <laughs> you also need a fuzzy koozie to put that library of flavors in yes. as well. So there's a lot of layers to this. Oh yeah. Seems Many layers. It's like an onion. Yeah. <laughs> Let's break it down. <laughs> Buzz's Booch, onion flavored. That might be the first <laughs> flavor. You could sell though. No I one makes. Actually, onion I'll tell you what. I would actually like to pull out my investment. <laughs> what you're gonna pull out? Yeah, I like, after I heard the onion flavor, don't I'm out. pull out so I'm quick. <laughs> let it soak a while. Oh, you, you know, know what I mean? Soak. Let it okay, soak. let the let the idea marinate. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. What are you gonna get? Let's get into a Patreon. Yeah. Let's. I, well, I brought up your red kit earlier, and uh, we had a Patreon guy who, Jake Knapp. Knapke, actually, uh, a few years ago, 
It seemed like you were frequently running the monochromatic all red fits. Was there any inspiration behind that? I love the way it looked, and I want more. I love it. Thank I liked you, Jake. it too when you drove through the park, ripping with the Lick to Cat crew, <laughs> yeah. shining out there, hot dogging. I guess yeah, at that dogging. point. Um, yeah, I don't know why I was running those. They're pretty heinous for sure. <laughs> Photographers dream, dude. Yeah, definitely. Bob, Bob was Plum loving set it. you up. Did he set you up with that <laughs> kit? Or did like, it for you? You know who was probably the most hype is Andrew Miller's all about the colors. Uh, he loves when people got colors on. Um, nowadays, I'm a little bit more low key black. <laughs> really? You're been hanging out black. with Uncle Brian B Fox. Um, no, I still like running color, but I don't know why. I was just running it. I was like feeling it. I used to ride for Volcom back in the day, and they used to send me like boxes of outerwear, and sometimes the colors were pretty wild. Yeah, they <laughs> had some like, lime green. Here fits. we go. I'm putting them on. Like, let's go. <laughs> but yeah, and then it just turned into all red. And then I think I had an all orange quick kit. That one was nice. I remember the thing that is, when you put on those those kits, like you put on an all white, you put on an all orange, you better show up and flex that That's day. true. You can't just like cruise around in like of just that loud pack of a kit and not just be busting or just be like hot boying around because like that's some, that's a flex. It's true. You know who's probably the biggest influence now that I look back on the orange kid is twos. Ah, I feel like I loved him in, in, in the county orange. He's oh yeah, air horn for that. So I don't know. Well, we got Jeff Goldblum the fly. Cool. That's not a fly, man. That is like a killer bee. Dude, that thing's crazy. Killer bees on a swarm, oh, dude. He just flew into the wall. Um, but did. yeah, shouts to J2. I, I had an orange kit for a minute, I think. I think that killer Got bee to go just all died. Colors. <laughs> flew into the wall and died. <laughs> huh. So uh, one thing I forgot to touch on, talking about Backyard Boogie, was a line you rode called Terminal Cancer. Is that what it's called? Yeah, yeah. So the, the last part of the movie... Um, it, this thing kind of became my like Achilles heel. <laughs> I kept going back, and it just wouldn't work out every time I go back. Um, Explain what it is to listeners. Yeah, I don't. I'm lost. Yeah, so here. it's basically this uh coolar that's located like just outside Elko, Nevada. So it's probably like uh, I'd say it's halfway to Tahoe from here, so like four or five hour drive. For the layman's difference between a coolar and a cornice and <laughs> a cornice, you know, a cornice is a big one. No, You're I'm, thinking shoot. What's, a, what's exactly a coolar? A coolar is like two rock walls you're riding in between. That's a coolar. That's a coolar. Yeah. Couloir. Like, a narrow, like a narrow kind of... It's a French like word. Like Wolverine? Couloir. Is, is Couloir. Wolverine, huh? Is Wolverine a coolar? Wolverine? Uh, there's oh, coolars in... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So anytime you're going between two rocks? Yeah, yeah. It's a coolar for sure. Like right. pipeline at Snowbird when you get off the tram. That thing's... Couloir. Oh, Say like, it like a Frenchman. Couloir. The granola bladers like to call them coolies. 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 Oh, yeah. Coolie term. hunting. I call um, him John Coolies. Yeah, that's <laughs> there actually. <we> go. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Coolie, you know, actually, John Cooley was the first one to ever ride one. Yeah, that's he why was they got the first name. one to ride the <laughs> He rode it on a 145 so uh, jib board. Damn, yeah, we got to get Cooley down a Coolar. That, that sounds good. great. You should get Bob Plum on photo and Cooley in a Coolar. Oh, yeah. <laughs> L1 ad right there. Boom. Um, but yeah, it's basically located in just outside Elko, Nevada. So many people that I have known have gotten it good, and it's, like, pretty big in, like, the touring ski world, I would say. Um, but I just haven't seen anyone, like, ride it really good, and I just keep – I went up there a bunch of times, and it just wouldn't work out. Like, the road was closed, or, like, avi conditions were bad. And then finally we, like, on a whim, I just, like, checked the weather this winter. Like, I was all tired about to fall asleep, and I was like, oh, my God, like, it's going to be good there. So I hit up Bob, and Jared Elliston was staying at my house at the time. And we basically drove through a blizzard at night. It was me, Bob Plum, Jack Daw, and Jared. And props to Bob. He, like, off, off on a whim, just, like, decided he's driving us. We stayed in a motel in Elko. Woke up the next morning. Somehow, like, the gate was open. We just pulled Bob's truck straight to the bottom. He, like, droned it off his tailgate. It's Bob's dream. You can drive <laughs> right to the bottom of this cool I I didn't need, I didn't know you could either. Um, the gate has always been closed when ah. I've tried. So I was, like, ready for the walk. And then we got in there, and it was just, like, straight to it. It was so sick. Did you boot up it? Yeah, you boot pack show up the thing. How long the walk normally? It's not that far. I would say it's probably, like, 2,000 vert. But, like... I was hiking so fast. Daw was having to slow me down because he wanted to take photos. I was like kid in the candy shop because it was so good. Like it was like boot top pow. I was like fr frothing boot to get to top the top. Pow. Were you boot holing up it? Boot hole. No, I was. it was a light boot hole. Okay. <clears throat> Maybe like a, just a stop and chat. Okay. 
<laughs> what and what's the name of this cooler? It's called Terminal Cancer Cooler. Who named it that? Do you know the backstory? I don't know the backstory. I should look it up. But it's so it's like this thing looks like it's been carved by like the rock gods. It's like a cooler from heaven. I'll it, tell you what, I'll look it up, put it in the show notes. I'll link you. Yeah, yeah. But it's literally like goes the, the fall line's like straight down. It barely curves at all. And it's just like clean cooler. It's so amazing. There's got to be more up there. Is it actually wicked steep when you get to it? Because a lot of times from far they look steep, and then you get up and ride them, and it's malsky. Yeah, it's not too steep, but I think it's so long that you get going kind of fast, and Do you, you have, have to point it. And no obviously, turns? no, you don't have to point. You have to turn. You would if you pointed it. Props. <laughs> That'd be gnarly. Um, but basically, like you kind of got to turn because you're getting so much speed as you're going down, yeah. and then there's nowhere to go. Basically, well, you know, like Wolverine, you go up there, you got to point that. Oh yeah, no turns for sure. That's... Always point, point when you can. You know. Yeah. And Wolverine, you got plenty of ride out. But. I feel like there's. I feel like it's a little safer when you're pointing. It. Obviously, if the point goes bad, it's not safe. Yeah, but I feel like rag, ragdoll down a cooler. I see people out Chris, there. Chris, you ever hit a cooler? Oh yeah, oh yeah. This guy, he splitboards all the time. Yeah, well, we call them coolies, like I said earlier. Coolies, <laughs> <laughs> low dog. You should see the six. Piece, what cooler is you out here? Six hitting piece them? jib board heading down a coolie. Dude, I bet you this guy's five zero in the coolie. <laughs> Back one, switch 5-0. This guy's trying what to I, wall ride down one of the do walls I, on the coolie. I unzip the coat like MFM and just mm. kind of just cruise down the coolie. That's Let the that move. thing fly. Hit a little Nolly 360 butter mid coolie. Let, mid coolie. Let it let your jacket flap. Yeah, you ain't you ain't going fast till that thing's flapping. Yeah. <laughs> more flap the better. More flap Love to, the, some, to that more bounce the ounce flap to the jack. Let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> Well, going back to this whole, you know, boot pack, boot hole, skin, touring. For, for the people that don't know, because a lot of people aren't familiar with touring, mm-hmm. a split board is like a snowboard that gets split in half. Your bindings switch over to basically like ski, cross-country ski bindings, and you're able to go up the mountain in case anybody was worried. That's that's what we're talking about with touring, and also I've been referring to it as granola blading. So, um, <laughs> so, so just to clarify that, but a strange phenomenon happens is you're like, okay, I'm going to start splitboarding. This shit sucks. Like, why am I going to? And, and then I kind of fell in love with the going up like a fitness yeah. nerd. There's, there is a strange <laughs> yeah. phenomenon that happens, correct? It's just like, like you, it's a, you feel good, right? It does. It's crazy. I feel like I have this balance too, where like if I go splitboarding like a bunch of days in a row, I'm like itching to go ride the resort. But then it also happens to me like vice versa, where I'm like, I'll be riding the resort a bunch and I'm just like, oh, I'm ready to like, I need to go get out on my split and just like walk around. I feel like just walking, it's like good for your mental health and everything. And you have, you can just like banter with your friends. Best banter is always down on the skin track for sure. And just like going and cruising around. It it definitely feels good and it's good for you, I guess. Who would you say is a top notch uh, banter god while you guys are uh, granola blading? Wow, that's a tough one. I'd say Jack Dawes got a pretty good laugh and some good topics comes up okay. when Jack Dawes out there, um, photographer from here. The wet. Bob is a good banter if, if he's close enough to you. He's usually a little further behind. You can't hear his banter. He's just back there bantering <laughs> <Yeah>. to himself. <laughs> that's how I run it too. Oh, too good. But it's, it's the truth though. On your When you're hiking, man, like I'm not built for hiking whatsoever. Look at me. But I'll be honest, when I any hike I've ever done, I've never regretted it. You get to the top, it's always, like, the best feeling ever. Oh, totally. I feel like as soon as you get to the top, you're always like, oh, this sucks. This sucks so bad. And then as soon as you get to the top, you, like, forget all the suffering. You're just like, this is the best thing ever. Yeah, you forget all the suffering that just happened. I don't mind the suffering because I feel like you know it's going to be dope. It's, like, Mm -hmm. feels good. Definitely. Adventure boarding at its finest. At its finest. And, dude, yeah, some of the best, the 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 fastest hikers I know are Neil Provo. He's probably the gnarliest. And Forrest Shear, he's the turtle. He's a turtle when he's when he's meeting you. He's like you. He's a little late. Yeah, <laughs> I'm also late. We have an inside joke. Whoever's late is the turtle for the day. We, you just get the turtle emoji. You know you're blowing it, and, <laughs> and everyone just sends the turtle emoji. <laughs> um, but yeah, him and Neil are pretty fast on the on the up. Randy's pretty damn fast too. Randy, yeah, Randy's got. He's a stamina guy. Yeah. You know what I realized with all the boarding, whether it's a rail trip, you're building a backcountry jump, or you're touring. It's like the the banter is actually. I just am there for the banter. Yeah, like, right. It's like the snowboarding's a bonus. Oh yeah, the the the, the banter is is why we're there, hands down. 
Like cheese wedges, especially building the big jump. Yeah, there's no one. better I know like shit talking. Haven't done, done it I've done that. I haven't done it in recently, a while. But yeah, yeah. That that's some great banter. Mm-hmm. You know, that one's good because you guys are all working. So then there's like a little bit of work banter thrown yeah. in there. I would you assume just, the rail trip is really the same. You really get to know people when you're out there shoveling, digging, oh, talking yeah. shit. I'd say Shane Charlebois Shaneisms while building jump are are the yeah. some of the best. Yeah, you almost got to get like a wireless mic on that guy. And just <laughs> he, should, he should put out <laughs> the a captain, book. the captainisms. <laughs> yeah. A sick book with all of his Shane-isms. we got to start documenting them. I bet he has them documented. All right, another thing going back to granola blading. I want to stay on the subject for a second longer. One thing I noticed that is fucking infuriating is that there's like a weird flex of the fitness boarders. Like if you're around Alta <laughs> oh, yeah. and you're like, you're snowboarding. Me and Pat uh, were up the top of uh, Flagstaff one day. We got to the top and we're saying hi, some hi to some guy. Like, oh, beautiful day out there today, huh? He goes... Yeah, this is my fifth run. <laughs> he just doesn't even say like, I back. <laughs> cool, we didn't ask you. Like, It's like, in the words of Kenny Powers, I'm not trying to be the best at exercising. You know what I mean? I play real sports. <laughs> but you ever see those fitness fucking uh, nerds that like to flex how much they can go up the hill? That's it, annoying. Yeah, there's this whole like schema movement here mm-hmm. where it's kind of my... I don't know why they into it. Obviously, it's their thing. Um, but I think it's more like trail runners that can't trail run in the winter so then they like started schemoing trail running but they just like going so hard and so fast and then like they literally i've seen a few this is not speaking to everyone but like some of them can barely turn you're like oh really you should not be up here but like they'll just crush you on the uphill but yeah it, and then can, they can hardly get down the mountain dude i've had people pass me like while i'm on skiing down which is one like kind of tricky on a split board and then yeah they can be a little aggro but you got to just tune out the the trouble on that one. At least they're enjoying the mountain. <laughs> Tune out the negativity. Is it true you went up this spring, forgot all your equipment, and just hiked next to Pat Moore? I hiked next to Shane. Shane. Yes. Oh, I went up. You boo uh, didn't even have a board to go down. I went up to go split boarding, and I forgot my <laughs> snowboard. I walked up Alta, because you can't snowboard there. And then I walked down, and it was degrading. <laughs> you, d- you didn't even, like... You just walked up and walked down. I Snowshoe had, style. Yeah, nothing. Snow, like nothing with you went mountaineer. <laughs> yeah. And, and I was just walking by, people giving a little wave, like just kind of degrading, like, yep. Hey there. How are we doing? <laughs> yep. Walking down the hill. <laughs> oh, that sounds my worst nightmare. Yeah. That's the best part about flipboarding is you get a hike up. It's like all the best parts of hiking in the summer, and then you, you don't have to hike down. I hate hiking down. Like in the summer, I, I don't know why. It's brutal. You're like so hyped to get to the top, well, and then you're like, got to walk down now. <laughs> at the end of the day, it's like gravity-fed things are great, like snowboarding, mountain bike. You yeah. suffer on the way up, and then you glide down trail running. You're like, my toes have been jamming in the front of my shoe. <laughs> yeah. I want to fucking... Sh- you're like going down. You're not built right yeah. for it. It uh, just feels weird. Like you get back to your truck. You're like, I wish somebody would run me over right now because this <laughs> yeah. is awful. I just took 20 <laughs> years off my knee. Yeah, for real. Toenails gone. <laughs> um, the funniest schema story that just hit me was one day we were going up. It was super deep. And I look back and Forrest is like... He can get in his like good vibe zone always, and he's <laughs> I'm laughing because I did the like kick turn. I look back and there's literally three guys in all green kits, like schemo guys, like mashing so hard, and he's just like la di da di da, like oh wow, it's so pretty. Like he has no <laughs> idea they're right behind him. Oh, he's like taking like, his time. They're literally like clipping his like <laughs> flipboard on the back. I'm just looking back like Forrest, dude. Like <laughs> they're just like <laughs> juicing the pass him, and of course he like knows him. Oh, like the, yeah. yeah, it was it was amazing. Why do you call them schemos? What's the breakdown? ski mountaineering? I think oh. is the. I mean, there's a schemo co like shop at the base. Oh, of the it's canyon. like a term schemo. Yeah, they have like skinny skis and they like wear like tights. If you're wearing spandex, <laughs> <laughs> they go up in the mountains. You're yeah, doing about something the cold, wrong. Cold days, but they're moving so much they're not cold, huh? Yeah, I, this is a world I do not know. You know what? Maybe do there, any of them run the Niger fit where they run the spandex <laughs> and then the shorts over because that's kind of a swag look. That's kind of a swaggy, I heard that's your move at the gym, the boys. Right? Yeah, there. I did it this morning. Yeah, I, I wore the Niger. It throws where everybody you, for a loop. Where did you get the spandex? I dude, I bought it. Inspired. <laughs> let, let me tell you something. I've been, sometimes I skate Carhartts, and um, and the boys are going to roast you. You go this. spandex under the Carhartts? Sp- no, no spandex under regular like athletic. Are these shorts? just leggings you're putting on? Oh or? yeah. Oh They're yeah. Just leggings. Dude, let me tell you something. Your flick, your leg movement, you feel free out there. 
You know, a lot of people, it, it throws everybody for a loop. Blake Paul, he can't handle it. He can't handle the Like, it's just fit. the legs. I wore it to a premiere one night. Everybody was roasting me. Yeah. <laughs> I said, hey, I'm rocking Nigel fit. Kenny well, Rogers roasted chicken. Roaster's chicken. Yeah. I thought you were going spandex under Carhartt. No, no, no. Spandex oh. under Some athletic shorts. shorts. I was about to say, damn, you're like schemo in disguise. But yeah, it's no, just no. leg <laughs> spandex, right? Leg spandex, yeah. I never even heard I of that. I can't do the leg spandex. I have gone long johns while I'm camping, boardies on top. That yeah. is nice. I think that's a look, but uh, the leggings. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. To, huh. eat, to each their own. Yeah. Hey, whatever makes you comfortable out there, Chris, we have your back. Appreciate it. You should start a feel, leggings feel company, accepted. dude. Yeah, maybe me and Nigel start. Flash uh, dance. <laughs> maybe we'll, we'll uh, we kind of have a whole conglomerate. Chris's you know? tights. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Chris's tights. Grandy's tights. We got <laughs> Bud's booch and uh, Seeb's fuzz. Seeb's fuzz. <laughs> we, are, we are getting a just bl- like mega corporation started. Well, somebody get Mark ideas. Cuban on the phone. Yeah, somebody, Cuban, if you're watching. Let's Cuban up, Cuban. Yeah, we got the trifecta. Cue him up. Trifecta of businesses here ready to explode. Yeah, that's an untapped market, the legging market. Yeah, it is untapped. Yeah, so. Tights. <laughs> What about tight belts? But you well, call it it's, tight. It's done. It's just tights. <laughs> tight pants. And you got to say tight maybe pants. like J.P. Walker would or something. Just however he would rock it. Hey, if this guy beats you up the skin trail, then maybe I'll think about putting the tights on. Oh, if I beat you yeah, up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Are we going to do a, yeah, a race? Are we, it, doing a, uh, we could go live bomb hole. Yes. I'm thinking we need to set this up. I'll tell you what. I've been mountain biking with this guy. Tights. He's a fitness beast. You're, you're pedaling your face off. I'm slow on the down, fast on the up. He's like he's bike. like a ski mower, basically on the mountain bike. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Tights. <laughs> I'll take the green down, black up. Blue. That's what you do. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Uh, one of those guys riding the trail in reverse, you know. <laughs> but I want to talk to uh, you about a great subject, and it's fascinating to me, and it is your absolute diehard love for produce. <laughs> 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 this guy, you you see him hold up like a beet or like a any type of vegetable, and he's like, "Oh, this thing is so sick!" Like, is that true? This guy I, loves I get vegetables. Pretty dumb produce for sure. Mm-hmm. I just love them. I don't know. They taste so good, and like the the fact that they grow is just like magic to me. I don't it know. Is, you can like plant a seed, and then like a beet forms. Like that, that is, that is so I never cool. Really sat down and thought about it. Yeah, right. But it's, it is pretty damn cool. You could, like rock. next time you next time you're at your house, cut open a red cabbage and just look at it. It's crazy looking. They, it is insane. Nature provides. It Nature does. provides. It does. I mean, avocados. Oh, uh, what would you just say? Nature provides. No, Ava, what did you, you say? Do you, avocado. You, you said avocado. I thought. You said F in there, maybe. <laughs> it's wild, like dude. I said avocado. avocado. Aflac. Man, this guy says his, shit. his milk is, has an E in it. He calls it milk. Uh, I got. I actually got a lot of shit for that growing up because I was a milk guy, too. Oh, you were. Mel Gibson. Here's the thing. is, <laughs> I moved here from the East Coast. I gave my wife so much shit for calling it that, and then one day it rubbed off on me. Milk? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't even know the difference He's a anymore. milk drinker. And now my wife, when she catches me saying it, she's like, you always told me not to say that. And he gives me shit. Uh, milk. Milk Gibson. Milk, milk, tomato, tomato. Um, avocado. <laughs> avocado. <laughs> avocado. You got any of that uh, chalky creamer? So back uh, to the produce. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, let's so talk produce. I, I had a little epiphany. If you really, if you really want to fast forward this, this is beautiful. This is a little analogy. So this guy, he loves produce. Okay, which, you know, he also loves eating healthy, which also led to Griffin starting a garden in his backyard. I was going to say, he must have a garden. Which ultimately led him to working at a produce health food store. It's called uh, Liberty Heights. Liberty Fresh. Heights Fresh, which is about eighty-five dollars for a fucking apple, <laughs> but that's but which ultimately led him. To a pair of KDs behind his head. <laughs> so essentially, your love for produce led you to those KDs behind How your head. How does that work? What's the? This is the beautiful story of the KDs. <laughs> this guy requested them. These this are guy. my favorite shoes I own. Shouts to Kevin Durant. I don't know him, but he's a G. Um, basically, so I had to get... I was doing graphic design at Nitro last summer. Shouts to Paul Brown and Tommy DeLago for hooking me up with that opportunity. Um, unfortunately COVID hit and Tommy was like, we can't pay anyone extra. We got to like tighten the funds and everything. So I was like, all good. And then 
obviously I was like stressing. I need to do something for work, make some bisque. Bisque was running low. And then I was like, God, I really love grocery stores. <laughs> so I, I, I love going to Natty Grosh, which is natural grocers down the street. And I was like, oh, I don't want to ruin that. Cause like, I love that one so much. You don't want to shit where you eat. And I also love Liberty Heights Fresh where I ended up going, which was like the other way. Um, but I needed something to stand in for a while. I had some van slip-ons, love van slip-ons. But when you're standing there for a super long time, I got a bad back from the, all the, the jumps and, and falls from back in the day. I needed something with support. So I looked up on the internet and I was like, ah, there's gotta be something what that's good for your back so i look up and there's those hoka shoes that are like the foam that are like that <laughs> those thing. things are horrendous <laughs> it's like is, four is inches those of the ones uh body wears no these are like trail runner shoes you're talking oh. four inches of of kush continue yeah. four inches yeah. they look nice but they're probably they're not the you can skate el toro in those things though and be fine <laughs> you can be totally fine oh yeah continue um and then i was like well i might as well buy some baller ass b-ball kits because we had just watched the last dance I was getting all hyped again on the jazz. We were playing 2K, and I found these these baby daddies, and uh, I've been running them. So you can catch me uh, stocking produce. I actually just ended for the, the winter. I'm not working there anymore. But I was stocking shelves, stocking granola in the KDs. And you it, actually like produce that much. You, like, get in there, and you're like, ah. I do. I like. Produce. I actually was. I was a cashier, so I didn't get it. Like ah. I would help Abdu. He was like the produce guy. Abdu's like whenever I was, scene. whenever I didn't have something to do, I was always like, I love stocking the tomatoes and all that stuff. I don't know. They're R- so pretty. Growing looking. a garden is a wonderful experience. Definitely, I'm learning. I'm, I'm a rookie at that, but I love it. I feel like waking up every morning and like watering the plants is so nice. Dude, it's a yeah, it's a good feeling. And mm-hmm. then when you could make like spaghetti sauce or salsa. Oh yeah. Grow everything to make salsa and except cilantro. Oh, no, you can grow cilantro here. Oh yeah, you can basically grow everything. A I used kale, to a little kelzima. The I don't know if you <laughs> put Larry kale and, sal- and salsa. Yeah, you can kale salsa. <laughs> kale and salsa and salsa. Asalam alaikum. I'll eat kale and anything. I love kale. Yeah, you're throwing kale and salsa. Yeah, yeah. Why not chop it fine? I don't think kale so, grows in Mexico. You're supposed to massage your kale. Have you? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you are. But actually. Anyways, <laughs> if you grow everything, make your own salsa. It's a very fulfilling. Oh, it is true. Process and give give some to your homies. You can plant a tortilla chip yeah. tree. My my trees actually grew <laughs> in. Now I don't get enough sun in my yard, and it's harsh. Oh man. Well, well that's good for kale. Yeah. The thing oh, yeah. I love and I like the picture in my head is this: you're at this natty grocery store called Liberty Heights, where it's just organic everything. And you got Griff over here, smells like patchouli oil, wearing KDs, shocking stock in the shelf. <laughs> Just full identity crisis. You should have got some Crocs. <laughs> I can't do Crocs. Me That's neither. where I draw the yeah, line. Yeah, I draw the line of Crocs, I can't too. do them. I don't care if they're comfortable. I cannot run some Crocs. Some people live and die by them. Oh, yeah. He's taking a firm line on Crocs. Yeah, I, I got a I firm too, line man. on I'm Crocs. I'm not down with Crocs. You know, what's, what if you, you, know, you drop a knife on your foot, you're all set. With Crocs? Yeah. Dude, yeah, Post Malone's got a uh, pro model Croc, I'm really? pretty sure. Dude, that knife's what. getting obliterated by the KDs. <laughs> Nothing's going through those. Yeah, those things look pretty solid. <laughs> I don't think a LeBron's knife... LeBron's stepping on his toes, and he's still making that yeah. layup. This guy's and... chopping zucchini in the KDs <laughs> to make sure his feet are all right. <laughs> no, it was cool. It was fun working at the grocery store. It was rad, like, meeting people that I wouldn't meet, like, through the snowboard industry. Like, obviously, you love all your snowboard homies, but yeah. it's cool to just, like, vibe with someone on just a human level. And of it course. definitely gave me a perspective on how lucky we are to like get paid to snowboard just yeah. when you're grinding at the grocery store for nine hours and you're like damn like the that check comes the base the comes shift. in you're like ooh, not that the is, biggest check that is some little, the bisque hasn't even hit the oven at this point I'll, I'll tell you what it's a little easier to learn earn the bisque doing a turn on hard pack than it is to stack <laughs> yeah. groceries for it's true. hours on end gives you, know? you good perspective and though you're already it's not going <laughs> to snow for like two months and you're already out of there for the yeah i'm out. I'm, I'm gonna get some climbing in before the winter comes nice. chalk up if That's, you will I had a little bisque stockpile. I was stockpiling. Dope. But the car broke down, so it's not looking so hot. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you're one of the founders of Lick the Cat? I don't know if I would be the you're founder. Not, that's but what I've always wondered. You're, you're I, would, not, I guess we're all joined like... In late? I joined in at the beginning, but I, I wasn't... make you a founder. Okay, I'm a founder, I guess. The founder of Lick the Cat. Um, yeah, all the best friends. They've obviously all been on the show. The show. Um, hey, you guys are kind of trying to take over the bomb hole or something. Yeah, yeah, like the cat alumni. Alumni. <laughs> also, a name that is a little similar to Seeb's Fuzz. <laughs> a little yeah, crazy. Did you name? Did you name? I the didn't cat? name it. No. 
Um, you guys ever look back on that name and say, oh, I wish we named it something else. <laughs> Definitely sometimes when you explain to someone, they're like, lick the cat. They like say it twice always, and they're like, hmm. <laughs> You're like, yeah. It's a different era, too. <laughs> different era. I think yeah. that nowadays it's a kind of a no-fly zone. It's also just funny. I love yeah. funny stuff. Why not? Why um, not? But yeah, it's definitely been cool, and it's cool seeing everyone. Like we're all we're all so similar. We all like into snowboarding, but everyone's just like branched out into their own little realm. I feel their like direction, yeah. yeah. And we're we'll always be homies. Like when we all get together, it's like so fun. The banter is top notch. You got a lot of good good banter gods on there, I guess. Oh yeah, there's some very good. When's banter. the last time you all got together? It's been tough with like COVID and everything. Everyone's been gone. I I see like. I'll see Blake and I see Boggs and like Germ a lot and Sam, but I haven't seen like Hale. I'll see Sage every once in a while and then like see Neil's rock climbing. We see each other quite a bit, yeah. but you but guys, definitely the Warbingtons are like Gus is living in Salt Lake. I don't see Max too much because he's living in Oregon, but you guys got all bases covered. If you think about it, you got, <laughs> That's you true. know, you got yourself out there touring. Yeah. Then you got uh, Nils winning free ride world tour. You got an you got Olympian. Sage getting rider of the year. Oh, yeah. You got Hailstorm going Vegas, absolute dummy with the, on the yeah. streets. And, <laughs> and also partying in Vegas. Partying, shitting himself oh, yeah. uh, with Rob Gronkowski. We got <laughs> Shuby hitting kink rails. Dude, Shuby's holding it down on the streets. And yeah, then you, you got, got Boggs. The first crew. We got Boggs. Just, just got being Boggs, the best MVP. human ever. Yeah. Yeah, it's that a, a, it's a crew. good crew. Legendary crew right there. Honestly, those years that we the the year we got to film that movie was so fun. Like I could I love those trips were amazing. Just like good going times. to Europe with no plan, just all the homies. <laughs> it was so good. Well, that's yeah. the thing that people don't realize I think with a lot of this stuff like you look at uh, you know, not to not to kiss too much ass, but you look at Backyard Buggy, it's like low budget, it's fun, it makes you want to go snowboard. Sometimes you see these big elaborate movies with slow-mo, you're like, dude, I fuck. I don't even care. I don't care. But this shit makes me want to go snowboard. It gives you a feeling. That's yeah. what the people want. I that think. is what the people want. Yeah, and you guys delivered that. Yeah, hopefully that's like what we're shooting for. And especially like nowadays, I I wanted to just be like inspire you to go out to like whatever you have. Like, cause I don't think the movie only probably cost me like I would say like two three grand when I bought like the Super Eight camera and was film. It was basically just me wanting to, like, make something. It was just, like, because I wanted to make it really bad. And then especially just, like, filming all the friends. I didn't realize how much fun I was going to have filming, actually. I was, like, what, what was the end-all thing? I, like, got super into it. And then definitely props to all the Salt Lake filmers, like Butters, Harry Hagen, Myers, always been super helpful, Colton Morgan, Germ. Like, they all, like, helped me when I had a bunch of stupid questions. So it's oh, been nice. – it was definitely a really rad experience. And – yeah, yeah, I mean, it's not the carpenter, it's the tool. You could have, like, a shitty handy cam, and you could still make something cool if you got the right idea. That's I'm facts. not sure that's the right analogy. I think it's... It, it's it not is. the tool, it's the carpenter. Yes, Oh, yeah, exactly. there we go, there we yeah. go. Thanks for the <laughs> yeah. correction. I'm <laughs> just going to say that was backwards, but... I'm always close, but no cigar. That's um, a classic. You were talking about traveling. Did you go on a pretty sick to Japan, J Japan trip this year? Yeah, so right before COVID hit... Um, it was like a dream trip, actually. It's this island, like, in between Hokkaido and Russia. So it's basically, like, in the middle of the ocean. It's just like a mountain. It's like an earth zit a nipple in the middle of the sea. It's pretty wild. Um, it's called Rashiri. Rashiri Fuji, I think, is the actual name. And I went there. So, if, like, rewind a few years. Me, Brian Fox, Joe Carlino, and Bob were in Japan. And I think Brian was the one that, like, point. I can't remember who showed it to me first. Maybe it was Forrest Shear too. He's he's always been looking at it, and we on a whim like went in January, which is like unheard of. Like all the locals thought we were crazy. We got super lucky. Got on this ferry. There was nothing open, like no hotels, nothing. We had to sleep in the car. Me, Joko, and Bob. I remember having to piss in the middle of the night, and I like opened the car, and Brian was so pissed. But I was like, I gotta pee, dude. <laughs> but like, it was so cold. We like woke up, underestimated the hike. We didn't have split boards. We just had verts. Um, but it was a cool experience. Then we ended up getting back on the ferry and going back over because we were so cold. It's like pretty gnarly weather there. And this year, Austin Sweeten invited me. Him and Jesse Grankowski kind of lined up this trip, and it was an all-time crew. It was like me, Austin Sweeten, Jesse Grankowski from that owns Air Blaster, Jason Robinson, um, Shad Taylor Carlton, and then Sean Lucy, and then Endo who's the photographer from Hakuba. And it was so sick. It was kind of crazy because it was right when like shit was starting to hit the fan, especially over there. Like Corona was definitely a thing. 
And we flew over. I like wore it was like the first time kind of dealt with a mask, was like flying with the mask. And then we get there and like so right when we landed in Sapporo, like everything shut down. Like school, people weren't going to schools. But it was kind of like obviously, luckily we didn't get sick, but it was really rad because I was in Naseko and like no one it was like no tra- uh, tourists or anything. So it kind of felt like the stories you read about, like Ataro and all those dudes back in like the 90s and the 2000s, where it was like no tourists and it was just so beautiful. And like the sun, we met up with Rip Zinger and this dude Ohm. Shouts to Rip Zinger and Ohm, they're the best. Gantem dudes. And they were calling us the Sunshine Boys because it had been like snow. They didn't have a super good year last year, but it, it hadn't been sunny in a while. And we showed up and just like sunshine <laughs> every day. Everything we went and did, like we went and did Yote, which is like the volcano in um, the Seiko. Got that. And then we were like, damn, we're we're going to drain our skunk tank, dude. I'm worried because I have this theory that you have like a skunk tank. So like the more you get skunked, like you keep building it up and you build it up and then you're, you're, you're due for a good day and you just drain that tank. <laughs> it's like a quota, if you will. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And mm-hmm. luckily I was just on a Quicksilver trip before that, me and Sweden. And we were like, we kind of got like not the best weather. So we we're like, oh, we're like, it's as good. We're, we're going in with a full skunk tank. So you tank. appreciate the <laughs> skunk, huh? Yeah, yeah. Because you know something's Make good's coming. Yeah, yeah. And like we get there and we're like, damn, we might have drained the skunk tank in the Seiko. But luckily we had some reserves. Like it all lined up. We flew in to get like shots of the mountain from the plane. Private? We, no, we this is like a normal, PJ? this is a normal, normal flight. Like Not with a locals. small plane? It was a small plane, but like it's a like, Cessna. there's a bunch of seaweed workers out there, or seaweed farmers. And it's like a tiny town. They actually have a problem there. As one of the locals were telling us that like not enough young people are staying. So it's like really old people. And they, there's this rap group that they made there to, like, market the town. It's called the Rashiri Boys. What? Did <laughs> dude, they live there? Sick. Did the Rashiri Boys live there? Yeah, they're there? all these old dudes, and they got rap videos. We looked it up because we went to the onsen, and they had, like, posters everywhere. That's going in the The Rashiri Boys, dude. Shouts to the Rashiri Boys. But they're old. They're so old. Yeah, they look like they're in their 70s, 80s. And they're rapping. And they're, like, rapping, yeah. Dude, it's so sick. I'm um, back in the Rashiri Boys. Yeah. But anyways, we got in. Yeah, we flew over, and yeah, Sunny got like the shot from the plane. Then we were there. People usually go there. I've had friends, our skiers, that went there from here, and they got like one day. It gets psycho windy, mm-hmm. and I don't know. We got fortune favors the bold. I guess we went during Corona times, and it, we nailed the weather. We summited. I remember our guide was like, "Oh yeah, best day of the year." Like, <laughs> that's a great quote. Yeah, uh, fortune favors the bold. Fortune yeah. favors the bold. Got to give that one to Brian Fox. He's yeah. always talking about that. That's Whenever we're about to like go for something crazy, he's like, you know what, boys? Fortune favors the bold. <laughs> That's some inspirational talk right there. Oh, I like yeah. that. That's a good one. Where before you like head into a giant jump and just absolutely get slaughtered, fortune dude. Fit. <laughs> Bjorn Linus <laughs> dropping into Bin Laden. <laughs> <laughs> fortune favors the bold, boys. <laughs> Going in blind. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it was insane. So we, what's all that footage going for? That- um, Sweden's making a video that Lucy filmed. And then I shot a bunch of Super 8. I made my own little video that's coming out in like January of just my Super 8 footage and some GoPro stuff. But the main video is going to be um, Lucy made it. And I think it's Sweden. It's a dropping on Quicksilver's YouTube, I would guess. Or or Austin's YouTube. I don't know for sure yet. But I'm going to look out for that one. That sounds Yeah, the Rashiri sick. boys, dude. <laughs> it was a, such a you sick trip. You should run that for the uh, soundtrack on your head. Yeah. I'd oh, like yeah. to give that a little bop maybe when mm-hmm. I'm out splitboarding. Exactly, yeah, bump the Rashiri boys. I think they're like, yeah, we're the Rashiri boys, yeah. <laughs> 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 it's so good. And having Shad there, that guy's like constant entertainment. And J-Rob, just the best storytellers. you got to get him on the yeah. show. He's got an Absolutely. insane Some plethora of stories. Mm-hmm. But Eastone, I brought a little souvenir from Rashiri. From Rashiri. Yeah, you oh, need an ice no. axe to get up here. And I was thinking, um, I've seen Blake Paul and Jake Price film him do this in Mount Hood, but I figure you could shotgun a bubbly. A bubs? <laughs> with the, with the, the crampon. Uh, or with oh, the, no. the ice axe. How does Griffin's this work? holding an ice axe, and he's handing it to Eastone to shotgun a can of bubbly water. Wow. Let's get this guy a fresh bub. I have a fresh bubs. Oh, you got one. Okay, yeah. he's prepped. I haven't shot on a beer in a long time, guys. How does this work? <laughs> well, good thing it's not a beer, so you're you're all set. Or uh, anything. You wanna, I don't. You wanna, I don't generally you open the tab a little bit, so it's like so not open. You go all the pre. Way. You go pre. I get my finger underneath it, so as soon as the hole's there, it's ready to crack. Oh, that's good tech. Yeah, and then yeah. just is the mic gonna be okay? Yeah, we should be. Oh, all right. Yeah, yeah. So slap. 
open at the same time. Slap a little bass and then open it. Slap it a bass. Three, two, one. Fortune favors the bold. <laughs> oh! <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay, he drank about uh, 3% of that, it looks like. Yeah. I Woo. think we got a little bud, uh, Bud's booch in the beard yeah, going right now. <laughs> I got barreled, man. <laughs> Anyone have a towel? <laughs> You're going to have to. I got to sew up my nose. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have to do that too, bud. Oh, my God. All right. We'll put one down. We'll go around to bubbly. Hand board, me a bubbly. Though. Watch the soundboard. Okay. We're crushing some can right now, you know? We'll toss a little chalk on there in case you got a towel for the soundboard. This is the, some of the crunchiest shit I've ever done. You're shotgunning with a goddamn ice axe. Watch okay. the soundboard. Okay. Here we go. Oh, oh! good spray on we that got one. a little projectile. Here Dude, you, go. you did that way better than I did. Oh. <laughs> this is just oil cannon out. <laughs> nah, you drank about as much as I did. I think half it's in my pan. <laughs> Chris, Woo. you're pretty good at that, dude. Uh, we've oh, crushed man. some can over the years. Are those I was the never water too... wicking pants? Those look like those uh, climber pants that like bead the water off. <laughs> Are those uh, the... no? It seems like it's soaking good in pretty thing good. You put <laughs> a fresh, fresh layer on the. Oh, good booch. thing for the listeners. I just uh, stained the stained the the, booch. the desk in yeah. the booch. When we're referring to the booth as the booch now, that could be rather <laughs> confusing. But um, it could mean kombucha. It could mean the booth. You never know. Yeah, we keep them guessing. Good crunchy vibes on the table. <sighs> oh, hey, I got I got I another crunchy refreshed. activity. I feel so fresh. So I figured I was thinking about this. So 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 uh, Griff, he's big <laughs> on you know he eats fistfuls of granola. He's like the patchouli. Is that true? He likes all the, you know, he's out Not there, he's rock climbing, point, he's, got, he's got he's bag of chalk he brought in, minus the KDs. This guy is one of the crunchiest people I know, but you know, he's never burned any sage. Ah, s- smudging. It's called smudging. Smudging? That's what it's so called? I figured what smudging. we're going to do. Is I think I got some smudges on my glasses. Is that what we're talking about? <laughs> it's called smudging. So what, this is actually, Buds, will you explain the uh, process of smudging? So basically, the other night I actually smudged my dogs, my cat. And uh, my wife and myself, and you do this. This is Sage, actually, from Chris's cabin. And you actually do this to, uh, you know, get rid of negativity, bring positivity. You even want to say, some people like, do a cross. You smoke this thing? No, you don't smoke it. It does look like but a you want to go all around. You want to waft, waft it at yourself a little I wanna bit. I want to smudge myself. You want to go all around, and you mm. want to say, you know, we're getting rid of any negativity. And Pass this smudge over to, to uh, Buds. And last time, after I smudged... My animals, my cat loved it. I think it made the cat high. Positivity. <laughs> so for the listeners, what's going on is Buds is holding something that looks like a giant cannon, like a like almost yeah. like a joint. Huge what joint. it is is sagebrush rolled up kind of like a joint. <laughs> and you're, we're smoking it in the booth right now to try to match Griffin's uh, crunchiness. And you bring the positivity. You guys are teaching me a new, I, new element that I don't even know. I actually uh, felt a huge wave of positivity. Yeah, what's Come up with the me. other? You have a good waft with you your your, waft your other hand. It. Yeah, you got to okay. waft it. That's the tech, yeah. huh? And then you get it all around. But, you. Buds claims he felt like a spirit leave him or yeah. some shit. I'm gonna do my house actually tonight. You're supposed to start at your front door, go through your whole house, and then end through your front door, and it kicks any negative spirits out. I'm pretty sure I have a demon living in my basement. <laughs> Facts. I think I got some demons in the toilet. I might have to smudge out the bathroom. I have (laughs) demons in my basement, and we are going to get them out tonight with a serious aging smudging. Speaking of demons in the toilet, though, this dude, when we were recording at one point, I'm going to throw him under the bus so hard right now. I'm sorry, but what happened is one time we were recording Jib Girl's episode, and right as Jib Girl rolled up, Bud basically (laughs) dropped a bomb in the toilet. Dude, this thing was aggressive. Everybody And she comes in, and she's like, Hey, mind if I use your bathroom? And I'm like, uh, that's that's chill. You can go in there. Just so you know, I smudged before. Dude, there was no coming back from I this. I smudged. <laughs> Yo, porcelain was still warm. Everybody poops. That's what we call tracked out porcelain. Yeah. We're talking, this thing was some Tr- Chernobyl type shit. You want the hazmat <laughs> suits. This is full Chernobyl. This is full Netflix Chernobyl. dark. She might have gone back in time. <laughs> Luckily, I smudged. <laughs> Damn, you guys should sell some bomb hole schmudge. Oh, we should, dude. We, we should could actually... bundle up some sage. Well, did you notice, too, there's crystals on the schmudger. So these things, actually, you put them specifically. I think the crystals yeah, block certain... the spirits. Yeah, there's crystals. Uh, they actually yeah. bring a whole other element to it. You charging those in the in the full moon, too, as well? 
as well? people, yeah, people charge them, but it brings a whole other element of positivity, <laughs> man. There's a whole, I heard a whole podcast about smudging and crystals and. Technically, molecules are moving in the crystal, so you never know. Yeah, see, it could should, happen. You you study rocks. You should be in the smudging and crystals. And I'm not a huge crystal guy. I'm not gonna lie, but it, whatever makes you feel good, that's what I say. Run with it. You wait. You smudge yourself. You're gonna feel positive. I'm already feeling good. Yeah, that's what I'm talking. about. I feel about. like the smudge is getting all this bubbly out of my pants. <laughs> <It's> true. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of these crystals and rocks, though, we're gonna do what I call another pivot back to a. Or as a beating the dead horse, circle back around. Another yep. one I like to beat to death. Yeah. So uh, basically, you went to college. Mm-hmm. You studied fucking rocks. Uh, now you're doing marketing shit, whatever. But basically, uh, would you recommend college to somebody thinking about doing it? I mean, I de- I definitely recommend it if it's of like the means to you. I was super lucky that like my parents and my grandpa had like set a fund aside, so. It was kind of like I kind of had to take that opportunity. Um, I think it was awesome. I I just like I'm always looking for knowledge. I feel like I'm like on a knowledge thirst where I like I always love learning. I definitely miss lecture now, not going. Um, but I think it's a you can juggle it for sure. Like I just went in the summer and the fall, and then I saved all my classes in the spring till the last year I was there. Um, but I think the main thing I got out of college was more of like a work ethic. And especially like when snowboarding kind of started taking off and I was traveling a little, it was during my last year at college and it got a little hectic. I'd have to like kind of be pr- like proactive and I'd have to take my finals early because I'd have like some nitro trip like come up in the spring. And I think those lessons are like more valuable than the actual learning, which you could find that like college isn't for everyone, obviously. Um, I have friends that are so smart, but like necessarily wouldn't do super good in college. And I don't think that's, like, something to shame on someone. Just because, like, especially someone like me, I'm an idiot. I don't know how to mow a lawn well. But I could, like, take a test out of a a textbook pretty well. Um, So, I don't know. It's just, like, give or take. But I definitely don't regret it at all. And and especially, like, I love science. I don't think I want to work in it necessarily. But I will forever, like, be thankful for that science knowledge that I have. And it just broadens your horizons. And you get to meet a bunch of cool people that you never would, like, I don't know working at a normal job where you see the same people over and over again. So I think that's super rad. Definitely huge with the <clears throat> time management. I feel like yeah. that's a big, a big thing, you know, definitely. And especially like I was working at Milo for, I worked there for like six years and I was going to school. So it was a pretty good way to like, I would just snowboard a bunch in the winter. And then Milo was awesome where it was kind of slower in the summer. So I could do homework while I was in there. They're really cool about us. Like if it was slow in the shop, we got to work on school. So that was super rad of them. Um, but yeah, I don't regret it at all. Got killer. some got some killer random rock knowledge that yeah. I can surprise people with, good, I guess. Yeah. It's good for knowing what chalk to use and mm-hmm. I think I lose it faster than I than I gained it, but Well, that also kind of uh fast forwards to now, uh these boards behind you, you um basically did some design work for, right? You designed those boards. Yep. And you got a degree in rocks, so it's good to know that <laughs> that thing's going to good use. Mm-hmm. I'm yeah. scraping rocks with the with the board. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I've been... It was funny because I was at the, my geology job and because I don't make enough off... Not, not enough bis to live the whole year off snowboarding, so I always got to find some summer gig. And I don't mind that. I, I kind of like, like having something to do to learn. I love learning. And... Uh, in the geology job, I kind of I had to do a bunch of figures for these older geologists because they they weren't super good with the computer programs. They're super smart, so I became kind of like the figure bitch. <laughs> I was like making all their figures, and a figure would be like the the photo that's in the science paper, basically. And so I kept making those, and I realized keep I just it easy terms for us. You yeah, make it really dumbed down. That's what I'm saying. The picture. <laughs> yeah. Continue. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> scratch and sniff, you know, and. Uh, so basically just was making the pictures and I realized I like just making figures. And then I basically just realized I like just making graphics and I approached Nitro. Um, Tommy was super cool about, about it. They, they helped me buy my laptop. And then Paul Brown, he lives in Salt Lake. He does all the board graphics. So I was basically his intern last summer. So I just like learned how to use Illustrator and Photoshop. And then they got me, they got, let me do a few. I did my board and then I did like a few other boards. Um, so it was super fun. And yeah, I don't know. It came out. There's some flowers on there. Joyride inspiration. I know it's funny. I, I actually, like that a lot. 
because I was at Bald Face this past winter and I saw it after I had made this and it's same purple flower on the bottom. And I was like, oh man, I must have like, I've for sure seen that board before, but I like didn't register it in my brain. I think well, it's I like definitely different enough. Yeah. Yeah. Way. But I think I like subconsciously was like inspired by it. Right. Yeah. Cause you're like inspired by everything. That's There's true. no way you're not copying something. I mean, that was like in 93, that was the board. 92, yeah, 93. That was the year I was born. Really? Jesus. <laughs> That's kind of crazy that works out like that. <laughs> right? Um, 92, 93, that was the board. Yeah, the joyride. Well, I was probably Shit about going. 65 in 92 or 93. <laughs> yeah. He was yeah. just a young sprout. <laughs> I was a young sprout, dude, and I was rocking one of those boards. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, I was, I don't know, I hyped on the flower vibe. I want it to look, like, simple. I feel like I try and put myself in the shoe of, like, the the customer, I think that's the one thing I realized that I learned the most that I wasn't expecting to learn when I was working at Nitro is I was down at the Foundry, which is like the U.S. office down here. Um, So Jeff Richards and Benny Pellegrino run it down there. Shouts to Jeff and Benny. They're the best. Um, Basically, so I learned like design from Tommy and Paul and like graphic design. And then I have a sense of marketing just from being a rider and dealing with Canute. But what I learned the most about, I think, was sales, just sitting in the room with Benny and Jeff. And just kind of realizing like some thoughts you have when you have marketing and design that like you need the sales. It's like the engine that powers the horse, you know, like without it, it's like this triangle. You need every component. Unfortunately, you got to sell something for the business to stay alive. Unfortunately. (laughs) Unfortunately, (laughs) I I would make a bunch of stuff that no one doesn't like. No. Um, Seeds fuzz. Yeah. (laughs) Wasn't too good. The engine on the sales was was not happening on that one. Um, But no, it was super cool. and And I feel like it makes me realize when you go to buy a graphic or like a board, you're sitting in the shop, you got to put yourself in the customer's shoes. Like to me, I kind of like simple stuff. So I want something that's like simple, not too crazy that I can like, obviously I've made some crazy graphics in the past, but as of right now, I'm into like simple things. And I don't know, just putting yourself in the customer's shoes, I think, cause like a snowboard's a big purchase. That's like 500 bucks. It's like, I would be like, oh, I don't know if I would buy a board if, if it was the board I wanted that didn't have the right graphics. So, like, graphics are super important to me. And I don't know. It's just been cool going down that path. And then even, like, say there's a board graphic, but it sells super well. you got to be careful. You don't want to change it too much because it's doing good. So, it it's like this crazy. It takes a customer to catch up and understand yeah. what it is. And, and it's crazy because you're making, like, this thing seems so old to me now. Like, that graphic is from, like, a year or two ago where it's just coming out now or we're so far, like, ahead when you're in the design process that it's, like, you kind of got to, like, predict the future a little bit, which is crazy. Uh, another thing people don't understand, back to graphics, if you look at the way uh, Snowboard Brand is run, you have, like, a marketing team, which is, like, essentially the team riders and the guy that runs the marketing, and then you have your sales guys, which are your reps, and those guys that go out and sell it. And there's a constant battle, like, for riders, for somebody like myself, I like a graphic that looks like a skateboard. It's, like, maybe it doesn't say, like, Solomon Big on the bottom. Maybe it's subtle. And then you have the rep who who wants Solomon across the whole base or Nitro or K2. You know, the reps want that big logo so people know this is a ride snowboard. It's got to say ride in big letters, right? So, like, and then you, you, it's just this funny ebb and flow because, you know, the, that's what I don't know if the customer wants, but, it, you know, you can't make everybody happy. It's crazy, yeah. And I think you got to, like, to me, the best ideas are those people that go on the fringe and, like, toss something crazy out and kind of see, like, what happens. Like, you just throw it out in the world and then, like, if it's crazy enough and weird enough, then it, all of a sudden it's a thing. Now every other company's mm-hmm. tossing that same thing out. Yeah. So I think just constantly taking those weird little like artistic uh, risks, I guess, are, are important for companies, in my opinion. But yeah, there's some of those designers that are not scared to take risks. And <laughs> no, not at all. Sometimes they work out. Sometimes exactly, and some are just stuck don't. in their ways for sure. But well, back to, to your, each their own. Back to your setup. Uh, we get asked a lot about people's setups. Do you do anything unique to it, or what's the vibe on your board? Uh, you nothing crazy. I go like I've been slim in my stance lately, so I go. What are we talking? I like. 22 and a half i used to go like huge sean white oh 27, yeah 28 i had that shit wide when bow i broke, leg, when I broke my femur cowboy. that thing was probably like 24 yeah um yeah going in a little bit nowadays easier on the hips and then i go posi posi i go positive three in the back and then positive like 15 i heard some weird i don't know if who i heard this from but if you add up your angles you want it to add to 18 <laughs> 
What? That's yeah. some bullshit. I don't know, but three and fifteen. It well, feels like, nice. You look at Bradshaw's board, it shit's zero zero, and he's the dopest looking dude out. Let's go. <laughs> Who told you this full, about full 18? wakeboard stance? I can't remember where I heard it from. But yeah. I don't know. I tried it one day and I was like, you know what? The combo, it's like the Da Vinci code or something. Dude, the angles. I could I, see you fucking dude, out there with mine. a calculator trying to figure out your <laughs> angles. I do play with my angles a lot though. Like some I think days. Mine I'll, equals eighteen. Yeah, there we go. That's really weird. What's yours? Six. Six. What are you going? Three, negative three? Yeah, that's what I rocked. <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> really? It depends. That's like my park. On the front foot, you're three? Yeah. Keeps my knees straight. I like my knees being straight. That's crazy. Yeah, I got to have a little bit. Um, you're a straight jibber. Well, if I, I do like- on my big board, if I ride my 163 or a jump board or whatever, I will turn the front foot closer to 12 or something like that. I'm like 21 and a half in the front. Oh, you're you're like Ollie Goulet style. He yeah, was that's a coach. That's an OG yeah, stance. That's, that's the rear. That's an OG <laughs> <stance>. <laughs> 21 minus three or whatever. That is that's an OG for. stance. That's what we call old head stance. <laughs> Crank that thing forward, dude. <laughs> that front foot's at like almost 35 <laughs> <It's> degrees. <like, laughs> <laughs> what are you running? I'm like 12, 15. Wow. Uh, I, I play with it. I'm always kind of like Dude, messing with it. Dude, my knees have to go that way. Mm-mm. Which was funny because when I so when I was younger, my brother gave me 12, negative 9. Like, that's what he set me up as. And I kept it my standard, whole standard. life. Like, yeah. I didn't I didn't touch it at all until I started working at Milo and we'd have to go to those on snows and we were just oh, constantly wow. riding different boards. Yeah. And it kind of forced me out of my ways and I was just playing with my stance. And that's kind of when I started going like forward, forward. I feel like when you, like, if I throw down a skateboard or anything, my leg, if you look down, your feet are always pointing forward to me. You're forward, forward, too? No, I ride my, when I skateboard, my feet are straight. I, <laughs> straight up, they are. It's like a zero, it's almost like really? a zero, zero stance. When I do an ollie, my and foot's straight. And when you snow, though, you're forward, forward, or? Uh, yeah, no, no, no. It's like six, negative three, or three, negative three. So, six, yeah. negative three. Or three. But also, Crazy. you look at, for my inspo on that, you ever look at Jed Anderson stance? You ever look at Bradshaw? That shit is like zero zero, dude. It's like what are what do well, pipe some riders ride? Posy posy, I think. Like oh, my, what they, kind of forward they rock footing? forward lean though. Oh That's yeah, but I go I go heavy forward lean. I swear it saves your your knees. What kind of front degree you think pipe riders? I'm gonna have to ask them. I think they're like 15, 18 in that. Yeah, realm. I wonder if because I think you just uh, if you're riding. They pipe, sure as fuck ain't that. rocking a twenty five, Doug. <laughs> I didn't rock a twenty five, <laughs> dude. <laughs> 21 and a half. <laughs> or no, that's not what I rock. I take that he's back. He's a half a degree. He's got special no, bindings. That's my stance width. Dude, that's my stance width. I don't rock it like that. That's crazy. Um, I think I go 15. Yeah, but uh, I feel like... 15, like to just negative picture three. It at 21 and a half. Yeah, I don't... That's my stance width is 21 and a half. Got it backwards. Oh, man. But, not uh, good with numbers. It's like the T-stance home, that shorties video. You remember that old one where they like... The, like they do that T stance Holmes. Damn, you've never seen that video? Mm-hmm. Old shorties. I'm video. gonna have to go look at my board. Uh, anyways, they. I feel like my influence for the Posy Posy is like Blair Habenick or like I remember I was at a Dirksen Derby and Terrier was shredding and I was tripping on going switch, and then I saw him carving switch like so good, Posy Posy, and I was like, all right, I'm bumping that thing forward. You can do it. Obviously, I'm not Terrier, but you can you can Posse, carve Posse, switch. Would hurt my knee too bad. I think my back knee. That's what people, well, I feel like it feels better on mine because your knee's more straight. Those old clips of Nicholas Mueller doing a switchback five coming in the jump. Oh, yeah. Posy, posy, but he's like backwards. It's totally. Like, yeah. That shit's pretty sick. I swear it helps. Some OG. Because it helps turn your knee. You're already like turned for switch backside. Yeah, I'm cab, not though, super. Front, switch front side, you're just eh, I still think it feels good. I jib with it like that. I like it. Forward just lean. Full forward lean, posy, posy, back lip, hook your heel edge, die. <laughs> Dude, Stax runs heavy forward lean in the streets. Yeah, that's just a flex, though. That's just a flex. I swear, I swear it, it saved, it saved my knee. Ship with, like, a little bit of forward lean. Dude, I trip on people that take their forward lean off the Steven, binding. That's a Steven, street move. That shit trips me out. Scott Stevens throws them in the garbage. I feel like I can't even snowboard without that. Because, like, the time it takes to get to your heel edge is hey, so you slow. you know what? Let's circle back to what you said earlier. A poor craftsman blames his tools. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Backs. You're going, you might as well just toss the high back at that point. <laughs> <laughs> <Straight Jacoby. up. laughs> oh, yeah, uh, he runs no high back. So does uh, maybe Ranquit or somebody. I think no high backs. Oh, yeah, they're all the no high backs. You know, I feel like it's all bullshit. I'll yeah. tell you all of it. Like <laughs> It's true. It's Whatever like, you like, It's down like with. if you go buy a, like, a, like a set of golf clubs and there's some shit, and they're like, you walk in there, you're like, I don't know. I don't know what what to buy, but they're like, this has like some backspin technology on it. You're like, oh yeah, it does. Yeah, 
Oh, yeah, I want those Dude, clubs. Forward it's like, lean, they don't fucking matter. Forward lean has a purpose. It's it does. not bullshit. <laughs> forward lean does have a purpose. I will give you that. Try going up the pipe walls with no forward lean. No, no, forward lean is crucial for riding pipe. For and And also jumping. I'll yeah, give you that. Turning. It helps jumping. But for the most part, with all these cambers and flat, and, uh, and people are sitting there with a calculator trying to figure out their, you know, they got a Venn diagram of camber. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And it's like... It's like, dude, at the end of the day, they all work. They all work just True. great. Reverse camber's wild to me. Yeah, I'm a normal camber yeah. till I die. Me too. That's some old head shit. I'm normal with it, though. camber? No, I'm just kidding. Maybe I'm a young old head. I think normal you, camber's you know what, just though, you, circled back around to the right shit. No, the consumer, though, they're just like, oh, reverse camber. I think yeah. they just like that. It is easier for beginners, I think, reverse okay. camber. Yeah, you're less, less, less prone to catching your and head. And those guys that want that extra deep press... Teaches bad habits, so. Yeah, I'll I tell you what, so when you see somebody on a reverse camera board doing a press, but they're not leaned into it, that shit is whack. Yeah, not tight. Just lifting up their front foot from the not street Not tight dogs. leggings, if yeah. you know what I mean. Yes, get at me if you want to invest in our tight leggings business. <laughs> Tight. You'll be able to press any normal cambered board. <laughs> yeah, you can full get, forward lean. You can get on the G Biscuit Pro model over here and just go twelve o'clock, boys, on a nose G press. G Biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> Things actually fun for jibbing. I jib on it a little bit. Oh uh, yeah. I was born on the steel. Born on the steel. <laughs> <laughs> you drifted away from it though. Like, yeah, come back. Happened, I'll dude. sometimes don't uh, turn your back. on I have the steel, an bro. annual milli tube like. The down bar. I love the the thirty two down bar at Brighton is my jam. Oh, let's get an air horn for that thing. That thing is nice. It's like so smooth. It's a great, it's a great piece of steel. Perfect size of the the round bar. I've almost been wanting to uh, look up the distributor of that steel and give them a call and just thank them. <laughs> just perfect, <laughs> just get, perfect model. Just kind of figure out what the name yeah, is of that kinda, cut. Just a beautiful piece of steel. <laughs> are you more of a round bar or flat bar guy? Oh, definitely round bar all day. Flat bars are scary. Square bars are inconsistent. What about the shotgun? Uh, I mean, yeah, if you're in a you double know, a, barrel. A, yeah, a park, a park, you know, like a three inch, like a little bit wider round round bar, mm-hmm. like not not a two inch, but a three, you know, something like that. You ever seen someone get their edge in between the bars? I've seen in, stacks do that. It was uh, gnarly. In betwixt? <laughs> is that what it's called? In betwixt. <laughs> in betwixt the bars, yeah. <laughs> that is not a place you want to be. Wow. Nope. Yeah, it's like a progressive MJ. Dude, have you seen the. The sh- speaking of the shotgun, Freddie Perry's video where you like, you know, how they have caps on the front now. So he's the reason why there's caps on the front because really? he, he flew in with his ass, speaking of ass, and literally like a chunk of his meat was stuck in the shotgun. It was Freddie Perry? Yeah. When did this happen? Like a few years, like did a while ago. Did they have to do the anal adjustment where they went in? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Three fingers? I think this one was just a flesh wound. It was. Yeah. It, he wasn't on all fours. It was, it was <laughs> so, so are they like smooth caps? Like Yeah, so now all the park rails so have like a cap. So up. like you just hit it instead of it like taking a chunk out of you. So just to, cir- just to clarify, no jergens, no, no on all fours, no anal adjustments. No. Okay. Just a clean piece of butt cheek. <laughs> Oh, left on the rail. The bologna slicer. Just a deli oh, meat dude. slice. That's harsh. I did not know that. Yeah, about gnarly. Perry and the bologna slicer. <laughs> <laughs> well, Griff, man, that's been a beautiful conversation here at the boot hole. <laughs> A.K.A. the booch hole. A.K.A. the, the booch hole. Uh, we have a absolute conglomerate forming right now of three Businesses. juggernaut brands. Um, I just got crazy deja vu. Bud's got deja vu. Maybe he needs to get hit a little bit more smudging. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, we got, but yeah, what are the brands? Bud's is Booch. Uh, yeah, Bud's is Booch. Uh, Seeb's Fuzz. Seeb's Fuzz. Fuzz. And Tight. 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 <laughs> yeah, are we going tight tights with a, with a Z? Tight. Tights with a Z. Yes. Okay, I love that. Uh, so, like I said, if you don't want to find us to invest. Um, also, where can people find you on the internet? Uh, Instagram or YouTube. My YouTube should hopefully have some more content here soon. So, where can they find your movie? The Backyard Boogie Two will be on Griffin Siebert YouTube. Dope, perfect. Look it up. T- two spelled T O O with the umlau. Doesn't really make any sense, <laughs> but figured to add a with little flavor. Okay. Yeah, the, the two dots. That's yeah, kind of on. That's what it is. That's the umlau. Yeah, the umlau. Couldn't tell you. Uh, like I like Bud said, the last test he took was a drug test. We're yeah. not we're not well versed in that. We appreciate Facts. you guys listening, watching, and we will see you next week. Over and out from the bomb hole. Adios, thanks guys. You guys are crushing it.